welcome everybody back to my let's read homestuck series my name is brodimus uh we're on page 2309 it looks like uh just want to make sure that my audio is because something fucking happened and like all my obs uploaded and changed a whole bunch of settings uh, i want to make sure everything's good okay cool everything sounds fine good good just wanted to double check all that because boy that would have been just a real big old pain in my anus is what that would have been <coughs> anyway we're starting off on page 2309. Um, we're a little over or at about the quarter way mark now. We're a quarter of the way through Homestuck. Congrats, everybody. I have some water here. I have had a strangely busy morning. Went out, did an escape room with my wife, had breakfast with uh, my wife's family. It's been a busy day. How are you guys doing? Hope you're doing all right. Anywho, let's get right back into it. Uh... Sorry, the Black Queen has her ring and all that, all that goodness. <clears throat> she removed the ring and concealed it in the royal vault while she was quite sure no one was looking. She then retired to her private, ch private chamber from which she would dispatch orders, no one the wiser of her disadvantage. Or so she thought. Red Team, execute Operation Regisurp. The operation in time would be a total success. The banished quasi-royal would make the future Alternian wasteland her home. That's right. So this is the story of how Snowman came to be and, like, helped build up um, Alternia after that reckoning happened. Until she was given a new purpose. From scratch. But at the onset, you would know nothing of the Queen's aversion to an amphibious likeness, or about her orbs twelvefold, or any such de details. You were informed of her disadvantage, and would act accordingly. You and your red teammates would work to dethrone the queen in your session, while the blue team members would take on the entirely separate set of royal adversaries in their own session. This was to be a competition, after all. Or so you thought. You would begin to notice a strange pattern. The blue team's prototyping would affect the mutations of your session's underlings. And your prototypings would affect theirs. Though the, signs, or though the signs pointed to two distinct sessions, two sets of mystic ruins, two opposing teams, two separate chains of connected players, this was all misleading. You were joining a particularly unusual bifurcated session, meant from the start to receive all 12 players through two separate connection chains, a session with one sky about which 12 planets would circle, with one army of dark and one of light, with one pair of wing, uh, kings and one pair of queens, and with one cantankerous arc agent and his typical disdain for authority. It wouldn't be until later in the session, when the full chain was nearly closed, that you would realize the truth. The truth was it had always been the same session all along, that your teams were not competing, but cooperating toward a common goal. Hey, golly! Thanks for the follow, also earlier. Thank you so much. How you doing? In the more drawn-out form of this adventure's narrative, figuring this out would have been a huge deal. We would have been completely blown away by this stunning revelation. Wow, same session all along, really? Huh. <laughs> But, since we've decided to engage this epic uh, in shorthand, you feel you mm -hmm, must insist that we continue with this expository interlude. It would turn out the arrangement of planets looked like this, rather, bifurcated from each other, each team appearing to comprise a distinct chain in a distinct session without the luxury of the complete picture we see here. It appeared that way until it was time to link the two chains, completing the circuit of 12 and uniting the teams. For these final two links, Skya had a plan, as it did with the uh, order of every preceding link, and as it did with the paradoxical seeding of its own players on the surface of the planet, it would later devastate to buy itself time. Its plan was, in, was as inescapable as all others, as inevitable as the reckoning it would ultimately face. Doing alright? I'm doing okay. I've had a busy morning uh, this morning. Went and did a uh, escape room with my wife, went and had breakfast with my wife's family. It's been a semi-hectic morning, and it's going to continue to be a hectic day. <laughs> the Mobius double reach around. There it be. So Karka connected to Solix and Equius connected to Kanaya? Hmm, okay. After watching the phrases Mobius double and reach around toggle for a few minutes while in a sort of stupor, you finally snap out of it. Your attention drifts towards these two symbols. You would try to be mm, these mysterious characters, but you suspect you would fail, so you don't bother. They're way too mysterious for you to be them yet. Seriously, what's up with these guys? Do they live underwater or something? What's their deal? We'll learn all about them a little later. For that matter, what about this young lady? What is her deal? 
We'll probably find out about her later too. It will probably be quite some time before you get to be here. It could very well be pages and pages and pages. And pages and pages and pages. Seriously, it could take forever. <laughs> Enter name. Your name is Kanaya Merriam. This is a wall of text is what this is. You are one of the few of your kind who can withstand the blistering Alternian sun, and perhaps the only one who enjoys the feel of its rays. As such, you are one of the few of your kind who has taken a shining to landscaping. You have cultivated a lush oasis around your hive, and in particular, you have honed your craft through the art of topiary, sculpting your trees to match the puffy oracles from your dreams. You have embraced the tool of this trade, which conveniently is the weapon of choice for those who would hunt the heinous broods of the undead, which crawl from the sand at sunrise to feast on the light and the living. It would be convenient if you actually hunted them, but it is, of, of course, far too dangerous, every bit as suicidal as attempting to poach the terrible muscle beasts who roam at night. So you indulge in your bright fascination with the grim, uh, mm, with the grim through literature. Just before the sun goes down and you join your flora in rest, you immerse yourself in the in tales of rainbow drinkers and shadow droppers and forbidden passion. You are one of the few of your kind with jade green blood. As such, you are one of the few who could be selected and raised by a virgin mother grub, an event so rare as to elude documented precedent. She would defend you from desert threats, and though her life would be short, in time you would assure her of progeny. You are one of the few of your kind whose affection for the aesthetic strongly overpowers instinctive regard for the utilitarian. As such, you are one of the few of your kind who has developed a zeal for fashion and design and lively colorful patterns. You decorate your hive with flora and fabric as delicately, delicately or aggressively as inspiration demands. You are a seamstress or a rag, uh, rag ripper or a tree trimmer or a lumberjack, whichever you care to be, and your unique hive is equipped with a great supply of advanced technology to accommodate your interests. The technology and indeed the hive itself were all recovered from the ruins nearby when you were very young. The seat of your hive was deployed on the volcanic rocks beneath the sand with the assistance of your looses and her remarkable burrowing skills, and you have lived there happily together since. You know the ruins and the hive and everything here that is not sand and rock or, uh, originated from the world of your dreams. You also know that one day you will visit this world while you are awake. That day is today. Your troll tag is Grim Auxiliatrix, and you tend to enunciate each word. You speak very, uh, very clearly and carefully. What will you do? Can I equip chainsaw? What chainsaw? You are quite sure there is no chainsaw leaning on that bookshelf. There is, however, a tube of lipstick on the floor. Fine, equip that then. All right, let's settle down. No need to get hysterical. Oh, there goes your wardrobe of fire again. Never a dull moment in fashion when the randomized cycle is on. Apply. <laughs> you can choose between your trademark jade or black, even though a troll's lips are naturally black. But they can always be blacker, and a lady with a true sense of style knows this. In any case, you think you'll mix things up and go with green for a while. <laughs> Answer CC. Cuttlefish Color began trolling Grim Auxiliatrix. Hello! Hey. Can I- Hi! Glub, 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 glub. You seem more excited than usual, or less. I can't tell. Help me tell without saying glub. Glub, 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 I'm going to type this face now, even though no one knows how to make a mouth do a question shape like that. <laughs> Sorry, I can't really control the glubs. Yes, you can. But uh, that's fine. You can glub to the content of your collapsing and expanding bladder-based aquatic vascular system, if it means you are excited about something. I am excited! Okay, why? Everything we're about to do next is exciting. It is always exciting. I'm excited! Choo! It looks like one of your letters got away from you. <laughs> yeah, I really launched that, uh, launched that time. Or that one. You forked an innocent D loitering over there by the, uh, shout pole minding its own business. <clears throat> glub, glub, glub. Hey, let's stop being stupid for a minute. Yeah, sure. I'm just worked up about this game, and it will be great. I've been waiting a, a long time to get started. We all have. I thought so. I have been cloaked in a mood of perpetual anticipation for some time as well. We should compare notes, even though we are on different teams. Well, not really. Hmm, really? See, this is why uh, we should be comparing notes. What notes would you like to submit for comparison? Hmm. Well, I am going to join the team pretty late. I think I have to. I will need to connect after my goofball Moira does so, uh, so I can keep my goggles on his nefarious escapades. It's a tough job, but it's important. Everyone has an important job to do. Yeah? Isn't that what you're doing too? Joining late to keep an eye on yours? I don't know for a fact that she is mine. <laughs> You're not supposed to know for a fact, dummy. 
You just do what you think is right, and even if you were wrong, the worst that happened uh, was you helped someone and, uh, and helped the whole world, too. I know, but what if I don't really want her to be that? Glub, 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 shrug. Yeah, glub, glub, shrug is the right attitude, I think. Our minds are already made up anyway, aren't they? Yes, probably. Your clouds tell you everything, so what do you even have to worry about? Well, they don't tell me everything, just as I am sure she doesn't whisper everything to you. That's true. Oh, shucks, now I'm going to get sad. She'll be gone soon. Uh, though, I guess it'll be a relief not to have to worry about keeping her voice down anymore. I wonder if any other kid on the planet has as many burdens in the fire as you. I doubt it. <laughs> the fire reference again. They aren't burdens. Okay, I guess they are. <laughs> but I love them, and I wouldn't have it any other way because this is why I'm here. On that note, I think I'm going to have to say goodbye uh, to her. Maybe you should too while you have the chance. Even though I'll see her again soon, which still seems kind of strange to me. But that's why it's also exciting. Can I abide? Cuttlefish Color sees trolling and Grimlock Ciliatrix. Check on Lucis. He completely skimmed over Riska and Kanai's relationship and was so confused in Pester Quest. <laughs> that's fair. It's... Once you get into, like, the whole, like, romance quadrants and everything, either you... Like, people either loved it or they just completely just skipped over it. Hold on. Eh, uh, okay. You had nearly forgotten. Today her time would come. Maybe you should be there in her final moment. But then, it isn't exactly final, is it? Death is pretty confusing without the finality. I like this, this panel. It's too late. You'd better change back into your work clothes. No point in getting a good dress dirty. Go downstairs. She brought you this far. Now to live up to your end of the bargain. Operate. <laughs> the, the dotted line, I love it. <sighs> Splorch. <laughs> Capture log that thing. <laughs> You secure the Matri Orb <clears throat> through your chastity modus, safe and sound. You will serendipitously discover the key to unlock this card when and only when you are ready to use this item, and not a moment before. Look at this mess. All this blood and sunlight is stirring bright feelings within. You often fantasize about being a true rainbow drinker from your literature. It would be a life of darting between the shadows, of persecution, and being misunderstood, and of romance. You would drink heavily from its multicolored well, and the hemospectrum would be your wine list preceding the great feast of passion. Surely it couldn't hurt, while no one is looking. Just a taste? Flush for that jerk. <laughs> Can I and Briscoe always hated each other? I was like, wait, why are they Moira? Can I flush for that jerk one? Yeah, it. Uh, Kanaya's got a lot of like weirdly complicated relationships. <laughs> Blah. Metal with Moirail. What? Just wanted to know, is your Lucis dead yet? You then proceed to have the rest of this conversation we already read, bugging and fussing and meddling through the special and magical union one can only describe as being in Moira allegiance with, with another. At least, you guess that's how you would describe it. Maybe. Troll romance sure is confusing. You will put her out of your mind for a while. It should be hours before you have to connect with her anyway. Might as well pack this thing up and head inside. Oh, what now? What could this guy want? It never ends. Answer CA. It's kind of fitting that we just had Aridin's video come out on Friday. Though, I guess to be fair, we actually just got a brief glimpse of Feffrey who is coming out next Friday. <clears throat> Caligula's Aquarium began trolling Grimlock's Eliatrix. Can make her talk to me. Do something. Who? You're, uh, you're no good Kanawan fucking backstabbing girl crush, that's who. Overstating our relationship won't make me feel very cooperative. It's paler red than that. Psh, that is a fucking laugh and you know it. Everyone does. So help me out, uh, so help me out. Tell her to talk to me. I think she blocked me. You got to. Why do I got to? I don't got to do an, I don't got to, and every time you take my help for granted, I feel like I get, I got to do a little less. Whatever. You are so the village to wield device when it comes to auspicizing. You can't let a grudge go by. You won't stick your busy stem to wicks. So get with the program, fussy fangs. If your slander weren't so predictable, I'd block you to you too for saying that. Has it occurred to you she may have blocked you because you are wary or wearing? 
I just said that to, uh, that aloud now in your silly accent and had a private moment of enjoyment. Who gives a shit? Well, why she blocked me or about my fucking manners? Come on, you got away with her. I figured, uh, I figure, if you're going to auspicize any two brine suckers who sneer at each other a funny way, you might as well make it official and be ours, right? Your black solicitation just seems really indecent. What do you want from her anyway? She made me something for a prior arrangement. She will deliver it when we meet in this game, but I don't know what the logistics are yet. I'm trying to connoit her with her, uh, her here, but she's blowing me off again, fickle dirt scraping land hag. What is it? Ken, stu- uh, uh, Ken, stupid, what do you think? It's a fucking gizmo to blow up the world or something. Okay, well, not that, obviously. But something that, that'll kill all the land of the what else would I be after? Can you just for a moment entertain the thoughts of one untouched by megalomi megalomaniacal derangement and tell me why I'd want to assist you with that? Well, I'm not going to worry well kill you, am I? That would be fucking inconscionable. But what kind of friend would I be? Also speculate for a moment that self-preservation might not be what would sway my decision. Yeah, go ahead and kiss, uh, kiss us off, but mm -mm, there'll be blood on your hands. You could either play along as your, our auspices and do a little mediating like, like you were fucking hatched to, or watch she and me dip do wow well, uh, into fucking full-fledged kiss mises. Kiss, uh, kiss mises. Kiss mises? I don't know. The kind like you don't get once in 10,000 weeps. You know, you know that's what it would be. Uh, there would be rainbow rewards running through star systems and all nebulizing like liquid fireworks. It will be beautiful and heartbreaking all at once. You should read up on your history instead of pouring through that god-awful sunny rubbish. It's just laborious listening to this. I'm sorry, none of it matters. Yeah, it does. It's important. Sorry, but the fate of the race and purity of the bloodline is important. Excuse me for being concerned. I know, but you really should know by now the world will end tonight regardless. Land and sea dwellers alike will all die because of the game we are about to play. And I agree the fate of the race is important, but it's in my hands now. All of ours, really. Huh. Well, well, okay. Really? Ordinarily, I'd call bullshit on terrible stinking BS like that, but I know you don't really lie about stuff. Unless it's to yourself. But that's why I don't even talk- uh, I don't bother even talking to you. I wouldn't even be here saying any of this otherwise. So did your clouds tell you that? The doomsday scenario in particular. No, not exactly. I got clouds, and they don't tell me shit. They hide nothing but misfortune and monstrosities. Fucking pain in the ass fucking clouds. So how do you know, then? I have another source. Okay. Well, you are jacked tight the fuck into this thing in so many ways, I don't need, uh, I don't know what to say anymore. Whatever. Well, we will just play and find out, I guess. So you can... Uh, so can you tell her to talk to me any way? No. God damn it! She and our teammates, we've got to how a pow that's too many W's. Pow or something. You aren't actually on the same team. Fuck. Fine, I get it. I'll step off. You don't want to be our auspices because you don't want to get locked into that sort of relation with her. I can respect that. No, that's not it. Yeah, uh, yeah, it is. Your real feelings running pretty awful ruddy, methinks everyone knows it. Especially that ass-blood car cat he and me how you so pegged about that it's upright silly. But it's cool. It's totally fine. Don't worry. I'll leave you alone and give you a shot. It's unbelievable. Her patience. What? Whoa, 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 wait. Who? Never mind. Okay, wait. Did you talk to you today? What did you say? Or glub or whatever. Something about longing to touch you indiscreetly. What? And that she's basically in the scarlet throes for you, as deep in the flushed quadrant as one can be. Well, wait, did she actually say that? In confidence? To the letter. Can you copy exactly what she said? Absolutely not. This is bullshit. You're, uh, you're B, uh, or you're BSing me in some way awful. You don't lie, but you do tease, and I'll transfuse my kick-ass royal blood out with incontinent muscle beast discharge if I won't know when I'm getting hooked. Yeah. She's just a concerned Moira, looking out for you. That's all. Oh, well, fuck. See, I'm telling you, you got to play your cards right. What do you mean? If you're not sowy, that's too many Vs, about how will you define yourself to people. You can just splash into the Moira zone before you know which way's upward. Oh. Hmm. Can, it's hard. 
What? Being a kid and growing up. It's hard and nobody understands. Caligula's Aquarium cease trolling Grim Auxiliatrix. Get I don't need him on like that. Return to room. Aridens. Oh man, I have a hard time reading a lot of the trolls' quirks. Solix, Feffries are the big ones, but like, and like when first when she gets upset, but Aridens is the hardest to speak. There is a lot to do before you enter. There will be a lot of people to talk to and help along the way. No, not meddle with or mediate. Help, damn it. You are very helpful. You have a lot of inside information on what you and your co-players are about to face. You are jacked tight the fuck into this thing in so many ways you don't know what to say anymore. And it's not just cloud visions either. You have another source. Consult source. Okay. So many W's and V's. It's too much, honestly. Oh, that's right. In one dream, the clouds pointed you to the address of a server hidden in, hidden in an obscure pocket of a realm unknowable to mortals. It contains a journal written by a young member of an alien species. She has documented her experiences playing the game you are about to play. You can only assume this took place a long time ago. This race is likely ancient, preceding yours by millions of sweeps, maybe billions. You like to try to imagine the adventures of these players. Were they successful in repopulating their race? Did they manage to protect their matriorb and hatch a new mother grub? Could they hold it together, or were they torn apart by the complex social dynamics, the mate spread ships, and more allegiances, and auspicisms, and kismicisitudes that will surely plague your group along the way? You have little doubt they su succeeded with flying colors. <laughs> I love Troll Rose. I love it. You have little doubt their victory was because of their leader, a great heroine, the tentacle therapist. From what she recorded, it seems the group had very little knowledge of what they were getting into, and yet they appear to have been the only other kind to have risen to the challenge in a session stacked heavily against them. You are convinced her leadership was the difference. It would be nice to have the chance to talk to her. Alas, she's likely been dead for millennia. Only the incomplete record of a long-forgotten quest remains. On the other hand, if you, were, if you were to discover her quest ended in failure, it might be somewhat disillusioning. But that thought never crossed your mind. Tavros, enter. Having narrowly dodged obliteration, you take your place as the Page of Breath in the land of Sand and Zephyr. And in time... Tavros! Go outside and look at, uh, look at uh, what I built for you. You're going to flip. Uh, okay. <laughs> kind of dumb. <laughs> Firm. I think this is... Probably meant to antagonize me. What are you talking about? Look at my beautiful building. Don't you think it's about time someone got a little creative with this game? Um, maybe? Everyone always wants to do things the boring way. Didn't we make a truce, Tavros? That way we'd try to be less boring from now on? You don't want to break your truce with me, do you, Tavros? No. Great, now get climbing. Please don't read this as a boring thing, I hope. But it's physically impossible to do that. Mostly. Man, I knew it. Torres Snooze is back in action! Why don't you, in like, a not boring way, build more inclined surfaces, like you did over there? Maybe you could color them with fun colors, so you won't think they're boring and get angry at me some more. I built that ramp because we were in a hurry to save your life, remember? A dead Tavros is even more boring than an alive and crippled Tavros by a slim margin. My stair structure is lovely, and I'm not changing it. Now hop out of your wheel device and get climbing! Uh, climbing? Or crawling, whatever. Stop being so helpless, it's pathetic. It will take a long time. What's the rush? You're in the game, safe and sound. Look in the sky, do you see any meteors? I sure don't. But there are imps around, and I'll be sort of defenseless, lying down on stairs. Sigh. You did not just use that excuse. We both know you can commune with these things. Hey, why don't you psychically command them to carry you up? Oh my god, that is a great idea. Once again, leave it to Vriska to come up with the creative solutions. <clears throat> I wouldn't really want to make them do that. I just don't understand why we can't do this the easy way. What good would that do you? Whatever the purpose of this game is, it, it makes you work hard for it. That way you become stronger along the way, and you are better prepared for whatever's next. Remember when we used to flarp together? It was the exact same principle, and that's why you were always outmatched. You were too soft and not well prepared. Nothing comes easy, Tavros. That is why we go through the trials in the brooding caverns when we are young. To make sure we are strong when we come out. Do you remember the trials, Tavros? Not very well, no. Well, I do, and they were a bitch. But now that I think about it, 
it would make perfect sense if your trials were really easy by some mistake. That's why you're such a soggy phlegm sponge and why you got picked by such a sad, frail little Lucis. <laughs> oh, Fred, sad to have. But that's okay. It probably wasn't your fault. Just a bad break. You're lucky to have me as a server player so I can challenge you and help you get strong. Now hop out of that seat and get climbing. I'll deliver the vice to you once you're up the top. Climb, people, climb! Maybe I should ask Tinkerbell about this. He's really smart now that he can talk. No, you don't need help from your lame bull fairy. He is only holding you back. He's my friend. God, pathetic. This is getting frustrating. Why do I have to get stuck with the cripple? Just my luck. Do you have any idea how inconvenient this is? Do you have any sympathy for what I'm dealing with here? Uh, you're so inconsiderate. You just sit there looking smug. It's infuriating to look at you. You don't even thank me or apologize for that matter. Uh, uh, thanks, Friska, for saving my life. Um, it sure was brave and heroic and pretty of you. Also, um, duh, um, I'm sorry from the bottom of my nook. Seriously, how hard would that have been? Okay, thanks, I guess, but sorry for what? For being a cripple, for being crippled, you ass. Okay. You want me to apologize for being paralyzed? Yes, say you're sorry. I don't mean to be rude or boring, but that's ridiculous given, uh, the circumstances. Bullshit! It's something called a basic decency and civility, you fudge-blooded boar. Now get down to your useless, wobbly knees and apologize. No, I don't want to. My friend group of Riska Hate Club and I'm the secretary. <laughs> That's very fair. I always found, like, I Riska sucks. <laughs> Riska sucks flat out. Just She's a terrible being. But I always found her to be like the, you, you love her because you hate her kind of a thing. I don't know. She's an awful. I'm not trying to say like, oh man, Riska's fine. She's awful. But there was always something so like comically awful about her, I guess. Apologize, pupa. Apologize. Say you're sorry for being a cripple. We <laughs> summon Rufio. <laughs> We're gonna go to the corner. <laughs> man, was anyone around uh, when? Dante Bosco started reading Homestuck because that was a fucking adventure. Now she's done it. She has awoken the mighty inner fury that is Rufio! <laughs> it's like a stand. But unfortunately, Rufio is not real. He's imaginary. A fake. Like a made-up friend, the way fairies are. You continue to be sad and alone. <laughs> Riska, Wee! <laughs> Oh, she's so awful. Kanaya, mediate. What is it with people ripping toilets out of the thing? Oh man, it was a trip, golly. Like we like the entire fandom was so excited that Dante Bosco started reading Homestuck. It was it was a wild time. Hey, what's your deal? Shouldn't you be helping me out with this jam instead of fussing with my plumbing? Just presenting a floating reminder that Tavros will need plenty of inclined surfaces for his ascent. That's silly. I made so many ramps, you wouldn't even believe it. I specifically decided I wanted to build something ugly and boring. It is another land of ramps and yawns. He's reported otherwise. That lousy snitch. Maybe I should take his computer away so he can't go crying to fussy fangs anymore. Uh, Maybe I should upend his uh, this load gaber over your head. No, don't! I'm still learning the interface. It could happen accidentally at any moment. I'm only trying to help him. Think of another way to help. Fine. I'll do something nice. I have an idea. I'll be right back. And for the record, I was going to do this anyway. I was just trying to make him a better player first. Okay. In the meantime, how about I serve my client player the way I think is best, and you do can do the same for yours? Hmm. I thought I was. Scurry downstairs. <laughs> Scurry! Look at her, look at her go! You make your way down to one of the innumerable loot, innumerable loot strongholds where you stash riches and gold and jewels and prizes plundered during your campaigns. There they are. Your rocket boots. You must confess you will find favor with just about any kind of footwear as long as it is bright and red. You would wear these striking boots even if they are broken pieces of junk. But as it happens, they work just fine and they are awesome. Take them. Ah, uh, that's right. Go back up. 
Quit cleaning up after me. You are so ridiculous. Get code. <laughs> Just a little drop. I love it. <laughs> Shake. Well, that's interesting. Pashoos. Are you fucking kidding me? Send code. Pashoos. Alchemize. Tavros. Alchemize. Fly, pupa. Fucking look at him go. Look how happy he is. Fly! And again, in time. Tavros, uh, Tavros, lead fearsome entourage into ruins. Oh, excuse me. Fuck me. <clears throat> Commune. Confer with teammate. Boy, howdy. Yes, another piece fits. We are making some strict progress on this puzzle. Oh, that's cool, I guess. <clears throat> so where do you think is the next one? Um, I don't know. Probably buried in the stupid sand somewhere like all the others. Okay, that's mostly what I was thinking too, but it suddenly doesn't sound like you think the puzzle is cool. The puzzle sucks. All these puzzles suck. If I have to help you put one more dumb slab of boring rock in another stupid wall indentation, I'm going to put an indentation in my desk with my face. But it... Uh, it looks like a frog, and that's kind of fun. Snore. These puzzles are for wigglers. I solved way better puzzles than this in my heyday as Mindfang. Oh, look, some ruins. Oh, look, another mysterious recess in the wall. I wonder if something fits in there. It probably just opens a secret passage to more wall indentations. I am so over this puzzle. Uh, but they are necessary to solve, aren't they? To find new magic artifacts and things, and learn more about the lore of this land? Tavros, let me... Let me let you in on a little secret about the lore of your land. It's boring. <laughs> Shock face. <laughs> the minds of your consorts are very soft and impressionable, and easily manipul as easily manipulated as all those imps you've been bossing around. I have picked apart their tiny little lizard brains and seen through all the smoke and mirrors of their riddles. I have gotten to the truth they are guarding, the great big mystery behind this planet. And you know what it is, Tavros? No. It's bullshit. Meaningless, boring, fanciful bullshit wrapped in flowery poems to keep you guessing. It all leads to one thing anyway, and that's what we should put our attention on. Real gamers cut to the chase. They power through all the nonsense and go for the gold. They cheat, Tavros. It's time you learn to start cheating. I thought I kind of was cheating by making friends with monsters. Well, it's a good start if you're setting, uh, bending the rules and getting stuff done. Okay, I will admit I'm fairly impressed with your progress so far, even though you still probably haven't even killed a single enemy. Um... No, don't bother. I know you haven't. But maybe that's okay. Maybe it's just your style and your real strength of surrounding yourself with allies who are much stronger than you. Like me. I'm sure there is more than one way up the Esha ladder. In your case, probably the only way is to roll gently up the Esha ramp. The path of the inv invalid. Yeah, I agree. But I think it's time to stop fucking around. You need to be challenged more. I've been designing a quest for you that should test your true limits. Oh, is that what you were doing all this time? Yes. I mean... Not that I don't appreciate it, but don't you have your own quest to do? Yeah, well, after she got me in the game, Kanaya just left me in the lurch, probably because she's dealing with her own crisis now. Which is just, well, because I was starting to get nannied hard. You wouldn't even believe it. Nannied? So I have some time to kill. I drew you a map. Whoa. Here, take a look. It marks what, uh, what will be your new destination, where you will find the ultimate challenge. Look at map. <laughs> To the seventh gate, go here. Zzz. More boring puzzles, ignore them. Where does it go? I have determined from your consorts that there is a terrible monster deep underground. It guards a horde of treasure bigger than either of us can imagine. It's called a denizen, and it is the boss of your whole planet. Tavros, you will go and face your denizen. Won't that be too difficult? It will be the most powerful adversary you have ever met, but you can handle it. I believe in you. Um... Thanks? I mean, I respect that you have lots of uh, piratey bravado about stuff, and you type fast about it, but I think this is uh, foolish and, uh, and not sensible. I will probably just get killed, realistically. Maybe! That is the risk you take by being a brave adventurer. But it is a good opportunity to apply your cunning. Maybe you can rally a huge army to bend to your will and overwhelm the monster. Who knows? It is up to you. This is it, Tavros. It is time to sink or swim. I should get Kanai's advice, or maybe Karkat, since he is the leader. 
No! Oh god, every time. Always going and getting to others to bail you out. Anyway, Kanai is missing an action, and Karkin has his head up his nook with his new stabby hate friend. Neither can help you. It's just hard to figure out if you really think this is a good idea strategically, or if it's just more of the thing where you harass me but sound excited about it. Tavros, I know nobody believes me about this, probably not even a gullible dope like you, but I actually care about your advancements as a player. Everything I've done has been to make you stronger. Okay, I still don't know what to believe about that. Ugh, you are useless. I'm done talking about this. Now shut up and point that cherry vehicle of yours towards the X on that map. Next stop, gate seven, let's go. Uh, this isn't optional. You know very well that I can make you go to that gate whether you want to or not. But I would rather not have to come to that. What will it be? Advance or advance? Okay. I will go. Oh, one last thing. Equip your boy Skylark, Skylark outfit. This will be Pupa's last stand. I mean, sit. <laughs> Point cherry vehicle toward X on map. Beats up Friska. Friska gets hers, eventually. Not before some unfortunate events, but she does get hers. <laughs> Crash. You proceed through what seems to be your second gate in the land of maps and treasure. The Thief of Light lies in wait. <laughs> Friska, wake up! Oh my, it appears Pupa, Pupa Pan himself has flown through your window while you were asleep. How exciting! Surely he is here to take you away to the adventure of a lifetime. He is more dreamy and heroic than you ever imagined. But what's this? It seems the legendary boy Skylark has misplaced his shadow. He is looking everywhere for it, to no avail. He is having a devil of a time, what with being paralyzed from the waist down and all. He clearly needs your help. Help Pupa find, a sh find Shadow. <laughs> Pupa, you truly are a silly goose. Your shadow has been tra trapped underneath your useless torso the whole time. Honestly, where else would it be, you stupid sack of shit? <laughs> Boot, boot. Of course, the secret to reuniting with your shadow is to get up and walk around, and play and dance and frolic. Your shadow will surely join in, join in your gaiety. But it appears Pupa has lost the use of his legs. There will be no frolicking in this young man's future. Unless... Apply special stardust. <laughs> Everyone knows uh, that just a pinch of special stardust along with a happy thought will allow any boy to get up and walk again. Everyone knows this because it is the classic tale, or in, or because it is in the classic tale, Pupa Pan. Young Pupa flies through the window of a fairy girl's respite block, falls on the floor, and has trouble getting up like an enormous pansy. The fairy girl then helps him walk again, and in return, he teaches her to fly. Even though she probably already knows how to fly, because she's a fairy. They fly out of their win her window together, and have magical adventures for many sweeps thereafter. To be honest, you hardly know a damn thing about Pupa Pan, but you do not care. <laughs> Imagine being Tavros. Being Tavros is truly the definition of suffering anytime Briska is involved. <laughs> Pupa remains as pathetic and useless as ever. The Stardust did nothing. Probably because it is just glittery powder with no magical properties whatsoever, and it's basically bullshit. Because, in case it wasn't clear, magic isn't real, and neither are miracles. Or, it could just be that Pupa has failed to have a happy thought. Your duty is clear. You will make him have happy thoughts. Make Pupa have happy thoughts. <laughs> Just fucking throws him down. Oh, she's so awful. Manipulate. <laughs> Slump. Kanaya, deal with your own crisis. Phew, crisis resolved. It was no doubt harrowing and suspenseful. But in the meantime, you have left your client player in the lurch. Ideally, she has not gotten herself into too much trouble. And ideally, the dramatic irony has not gotten so thick you could draw a dotted line on it with a tube of lipstick and cut it in half with a chainsaw. Return to serving client. <laughs> Aww. So that's why she had you make this dress for her? And you just went along with like a sucker. Ugh, oh, you are such an idiot. Oh, there, there, sweetheart. <laughs> Mother's right. Kanaya, it's hard. <laughs> Being a kid and growing up, it's hard and nobody understands. Try to understand. Oh, here we go. Here we go. At least it's not leprechauns yet.
But we'll get there, but at least it's not leprechauns yet. The problem is that when the subject of troll romance is, romance is broached, our sparing human intellects instantly assume the most ingratiating posture of surrender imaginable. But we will do our best to understand regardless. Humans have only one form of romance, and though we consider it a complicated subject spanning a wide range of emotions, social conventions, and implications for reproduction, it is ultimately a superficial slice of what trolls consider the full body of romantic experience. Our concept of romance, in spite of its capacity to fill our art and literature and to rule o our individual destinies like little else, it still is still just that, a single linear concept, a concept usually denoted by a single symbol, less than three, <laughs> or a heart. Troll romance is more complicated than that. Troll romance needs four symbols. <clears throat> Their understanding of romance is divided into halves, and halved again in producing four quadrants. The flush quadrant, the caliginous quadrant, the pale quadrant, and the ashen quadrant. Each quadrant is grouped by the half they share, whether horizontally or vertically, depending on the overlapping properties one examines. The sharpest dichotomy from an emotional perspective is drawn between red romance and black romance. Red romance, comprised of the flush and pale quadrants, is a form of romance rooted in strongly positive emotions. Black romance, with its caliginous and ashen quadrants, is rooted in the strongly negative. On the other hand, the vertical bifurcation has to do with the purpose of the relationship, regardless of the emotions behind it. Those quadrants are concupiscent, the flush and caliginous, have to do with facilitating the elaborate reproductive cycle of trolls. Those which are conciliatory, the pale and ashen, would be more closely likened to plat platonic relationships by human standards. There are many parallels between human relationships and the various facets of troll romance. Humans have words to describe relationships of a negative nature or of a plat platonic nature. The difference is, for humans, those relationships would never be conceptually grouped with romance. Establishing those sort of relationships for humans is not driven by the same primal forces that drive our tendency to couple romantically. But for trolls, those primal forces involve themselves in the full palette of these relationships, red or black, toward or friendly. Trolls typically feel strongly compelled to find balance in each quadrant, and seek gratifying relationships that each describes. The challenge is particularly torturous for young trolls, who must reconcile the wide range of contradictory emotions, emotions associated with this matrix, while understanding the nature of their various romantic urges for the first time. Of course, young humans have this challenge too, but for trolls, the challenge is fourfold. Examine Flushed Quadrant. Here we go. Here we go! <laughs> this is what we're going to deal with now for the next little bit. When two individuals find themselves in the Flushed Quadrant together, they are said to be matesprits. Matespritship is the closest parallel to human concept of romance trolls have. It plays a role in the trolls' reproductive cycle just as it does for humans. This is pretty obvious. Not much more needs to be said about this. Moving right along. Examine Caliginous uh, Quadrant. When a pair of adversaries delve into the quadrant, they become each other's kismesis. As one of the concupiscent quadrants, it plays a role in, re in procreation as well. There is no particularly good human translation for this concept. The close would be an especially potent arc rivalry. For instance, human players would never be able to adequately diagnose the relationship between the queen and her arc agent, but troll players could immediately place it as a dead ringer for kiss kismesisitude. They would think they're pretty stupid for not getting it, and they would be right. Trolls have a complicated reproductive cycle. It's probably best not to examine it in much detail. The need to seek out concupiscent <clears throat> partners comes with more urgency than typical reproductive instincts. When the Imperial Drone comes knocking, you had better be able to supply genetic material to each of his filial pails. If you have nothing to offer, he will kill you without hesitation. The genetic material, without going into much detail, is a com uh, combinative genetic mix from the mate sprit and Kismesis pairs, respectively. The pails are all are all offered to the mother grub, who can only receive such pre-combined material. She then combines all of it into one incestuous slurry and begins her brooding. This doesn't mean the initial combination was for naught, however. In the slurry, more dominant genes rise to the fore, while the more recessive find less representation in the brood. Especially strong mate sprit and kismesis pairings yield more dominant genetic material. The more powerful the complement or potent the rivalry, the more dominant the genes. Troll reproduction sure is weird. We all take a moment to lament how pedestrian the human reproductive system is, and further lament that the phrase incestuous slurry is not a feature of common parlance in human civilization. Examine Ashen Quadrant. This is the one that just throws everything out the fucking window and says, just go with it. This quadrant involves a particular, particular type of three-way relationship of black romantic nature. Falling on the conciliatory side, it is no bearing on the reproductive cycle except for indirect ramifications. 
When two trolls are locked in a feud or some otherwise con uh, contentious relationship, one can intervene and become their auspices. The auspices... Auspices? Yeah, that's right. Mediates between the two, playing the role of a peacekeeper, preventing the feud from boiling over into a fully caliginous rivalry. Since such lesser feuds are quite common among trolls, there is a significant need for auspice... Auspices... Auspicing, auspicing parties. Without them, too many ashen feuds would become caliginous and begin to conflict with other exclusive Kismesis relationships, leading to a great deal of social complexity and sore feelings, even more so than black romance usually involves. Without auspicism, the result would be widespread black infidelity. The relationships each quadrant describes tends, uh, tend to be malleable, if not volatile especially on the concupiscent half, where more torrid emotions reside. It doesn't take much to flip a switch and transmute black rom feelings to red rom, and vice versa. In many cases, one party will have red feelings while the other has black, but it will often be the case that one party's feelings will swap to match the others, since there is no quadrant which naturally accommodates such a disparity. But thereafter, it's not uncommon, uncommon for the two to toggle between red and black in unison now and then. These scenarios naturally result in both red and black infidelities. This sort of relationship volatility is why conciliatory relationships are an important part of troll romance. An auspices can stabilize particularly turbulent relationships. If the auspices fails to mediate properly or has no interest in the role, or perhaps has different romantic inten intentions, him or herself altogether, then the relationship often quickly deteriorates into one of an especially hostile and torrid nature. There are many outside factors and influences tugging and pulling these relationships in different directions, and unlike humans who have very orderly, simple, straightforward romantic relationships without exception, excuse me, I'm going to try to slow down a bit, trolls exist in a state of almost perpetual confusion and generally have no idea what the hell is going on. Being confused by troll relationships is one thing we do have in common, though. Examine Pale Quadrant. This quadrant presides over Moira Legions, the other conciliatory relationship. A reasonable human translation would be the concept of a soulmate, but in a more platonic sense and with a more specific social purpose. Trolls are a very angry and violent race. Some are more hot-tempered and dangerous than others, to the extent that if left to their own devices, they would present a serious threat to society or even to themselves. Such trolls will have an instinctive pale attraction to a more even-tempered troll, who may become their moirail. The moirail is uh, uh, obliged to pacify the other, to function as the better half. The two partners in a strong, pale relationship will serve to balance and complement each other's emotional profiles, and thus allow their other relationship relationships to be more successful. It's often ambiguous, especially among young trolls, whether a bond formed between an acquaintance is tr true more allegiance or the usual variety of platonic involvement. Furthermore, romantic intentions of a more flush nature can often be mistaken for paler leanings, much to the frustration of the suitor. But some pale pairings, as the one above, will be strikingly obvious to all who know them. <sighs> and yet, others will seem to have been hatched for each other. Wait! More troll romance exposition, please! <sighs> God, you just can't get enough of all this, can of this, can you? That would have been a great point for a transition out of this illustrated sociological study, but okay if you insist. Now, see, what's going on here is... It's perfectly simple. When the full matrix of troll romance is in action, we have, uh... Hey, why don't you figure it out? You should be an expert on all this by now, anyway. <laughs> later, I'll tr I, uh, later, our troll hero would try to explain this to our human hero, attempting to convey all the nuance of troll romance through a nearly verbatim recitation of the preceding excerpts. He would try to describe how rich and textured the troll romantic comedies were compared to the one-dimensional schlock of our human cinematic counterparts. He would barely scratch the surface of troll Will Smith's virtuosity with the delicate lattice of troll romance, as he would assist the bumbling fudge-blooded troll Kevin James through the interwoven minefield briar patch of red rom and black rom entanglements, all the while sifting through his own prickly romantic situation and ultimately learning the true meaning of hate and pity. But would they succeed before the Imperial Drone came knocking with his thirsty pails at the ready? Yes, they would. But John didn't understand any of this because he's a moron, and he wouldn't shut up about his awful bullshit Earth movies. He would just go on and on and on about the about that garbage. Was Kevin James in... I don't know. Was he in Hitch? But if there's one thing to be hammered through his thick skull, it would be the troll's cultural preoccupation with, with romantic destiny. Yes, the romantic landscape is rife with false starts and miscues and infidelities, red and black. 
but every troll believes strongly that each quadrant holds one and only one true pairing for them, and it is just a matter of time before the grid is filled with auspicious matchups through the mysterious channels of troll serendipity. In short, their belief is that for each quadrant there exists a pair or triad of trolls somewhere in the cosmos that were... made for each other. <laughs> Wow, another great transition! You want to feel sick this time. You have no choice but to take a stab at the rare and extremely dangerous <laughs> two times transition combo. Attempt two times transition combo. Looks like it worked. So who is this guy anyway? Enter name. Your name is Aridan Empora. Aridan, do something awesome. <laughs> Wait for it. Wait. Whale! There she blows! <laughs> Swoop. I forgot how... How absurdly powerful that gun is. Here it is already awesome. <laughs> oh, that was a purple-blooded troll's Lucis. Fish food. Okay, that guy's pretty much squared away. What about her? The two-time transition combo. Enter name. Your name is Feffrey Pisces. Feffrey, do something adorable. <laughs> Swim. <laughs> Oh, it is so very large. <laughs> oh, it's horrifying. Go home. That should keep her quiet for a while, at least until she dies. Go home. That should keep her for a while and make a freshly orphaned troll somewhere pretty sad. Eridan, examine block, or Eridan, go home. You conveniently return to your respite block so that we may study your variety of interests. This was very considerate of you. Flowing through your veins is nearly the richest blood the human spectrum has to offer, penultimate on the scale. As such, you are a sea dweller, a subrace of troll distinct from the commoners by mutation and habitat, a caste which rules over the entire species. But ruling, in your view, is not enough. You have an overpowering genocide complex and have made it your sworn duty to kill all land dwellers. You have amassed resources and deadly weaponry from around the world for this ambition through many sweeps of extreme roleplay. While pursuing a working doomsday device will, which will bring Armageddon to all those on the surface. Haven't had much with that, but maybe tonight's your night. You hold a fascination for military history and legendary conquerors. You have dubiously modeled your profile and exploits after the most... Uh, notorious figures and their stories, which are bristling with the glory of victory, and the sting of defeat, and political machinations, and romantic intrigue. It is an image you are careful to craft through exaggerated emotional theatrics, and your penchant for mass murder notwithstanding, people tend to regard you as a bit of a tool. You also like magic, even though you know it is you know it to be fake, like a made-up friend the way wizards are. Made-up make-believe fakey fakey fakes. It's still fun, though. Your troll tag is clearly this... Caligula's Aquarium, and you speak with a very weird and sort of wavy, wavy, wavy sound and accent. You hold off on doing anything for the moment on account of courtesy to follow to fellow royalty. Feffrey, examine block. On the subject of courtesy, you have also returned to your block so we can get a better look at you. Again, quite considerate. Royalty sure is civilized. You are also a sea dweller. You have the most noble blood possible, the only one of your uh, the only of your kinds known to possess it, and the only to share it with Glubgalib, a deep sea monster also known as the Rift's Carbuncle, emissary to the horror terrors, or in more hushed tones, speaker of the vast glub. This makes you the heir apparent for Alternian rulership, which ordinarily would place you in a con in considerable jeopardy. Her imperious condescension would steer her flagship uh, from the fleet and make an attempt on your life herself, if not for, for the protection of your monstrous Lucis. And if not forewarned of your race's extinction by the whispers of that Lucis, you would have big plans for the throne. All the plans. All of them. You would redefine what it means to be cold in troll society. Under your rule, it would mean caring for the unfit and infirm rather than, rather than exterminating them. And you have put this idea into practice by culling the fauna of the deep. 
You tend to wild and beautiful aquatic hoofbeasts, grooming and feeding them daily. You capture and cage cuttlefish by the thousands for their own good, and also because they are funny and colorful and you love them. They often swim through the bars of their cages, but that's fine. You run your whole palace as a sort of wildlife adoption facility, even if the wildlife's need for care is dubious at best, and the practice really just amounts to an elaborate role-playing scenario. It's still fun, though. You would also look forward to using your reign to unite the two races. You were told you would do this one day by your Lucis, even if it does contradict her message of extinction. Oh well, you suppose not all prophecies, prophecies can come true. Your troll tag is Cuttlefish Color, and you have a hard time not getting really excited about practically everything! <clears throat> what will you both do? They really played up- I know Feffrey's uh, episode is coming out on Friday. Feffrey- they really played up Feffrey's quirk uh, in- in Pester Quest. They put way more fish puns in it. Aaron and Feffrey, do something ridiculous. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Fuck yes. Hell. Fucking. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Aridin. Father Feffrey. <clears throat> Caligula's Aquarium began trolling cuttlefish color. Feth. Hey. Glub. Glub glub. Yeah. Hmm. What is it? What? I'm wondering if you can forego the exaggerated emo exaggerated emotional theatrics for once and actually tell me what's on your mind. Nothing's on my mind. But why can't I, I just fucking talk and glub at you for a reason I don't how? Well, well, fine, but you don't want to hear it. Yes, I do. We're supposed to talk to each other. That is what Moirails are for. Uh-huh. Whatever. Glub, 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 sigh. Will you take the chip off your nub and tell me what's the matter? Yeah, well, well okay. Since we were the palest of pals like I could ever ask for, I will tell you, even though you will only humor me as usual since you don't agree with my agenda. None of my agendas, really. None of the agendas. None of them. Are you fretting over another one of these dumb contraptions? See, more condescension. You're going to make a hell of an empress. No, I'm not, but that is beside the point. None of your plots to kill the land dwellers ever work out, and every doomsday device you get your hands on turns to be a piece of junk. So, I got to keep trying, that's how all the great, uh, no, so, I got to keep trying, that's how all the great uh, military masterminds became great, through upright perseverance. <clears throat> I think deep down you stack these plots against you so you fail it because you know it's wrong. It isn't wrong. I'm not going to explain it to you again. At this point, all you need to know is it's important to me, and I'm doing it for us. I mean, our kind. Nobody understands, not even you. Oh, excuse me, I got the hiccups now. This is the last time I will say this. We are not better than anybody! Club. Psh, Hema Spectrum begs to differ. <clears throat> I'm dipping into Vriska a little too much. Hema Spectrum begs to differ. If you're as sickened by them as you say, why do you spend so much why do you spend so much time on land? You can have uh, the sort of affinity for our kind that you profess if you've only spent what, a few days underwater, maybe? In your whole life! Well, whatever. I how to keep an eye on them up here. It's all about tactics. What about your friends? Do you ever think about them? If they are beneath you, then they have to die too. And I know you are you like talking to some of them. You say you hate them, but I think you're, you're pretending. History is full of cases where conquerors cons uh, consort with members of the enemy in a manly way before wiping them out. It wouldn't go as far as growing fond of some. It's only civilized. Mm-hmm. I have a fishy feeling that the stupid doomsday machine thing is just another excuse to consort with someone in particular. All your feelings are fishy. <laughs> glub, 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 glub. Don't you glub in that tone of glub with, with me, mister. I'll glub in whatever dumbass bubbly sounded fish noise I will want to glub. Oh shit, <laughs> oh shit, you are angling for so much trouble now. Okay, please, let's just not get into the whole fucking fish pun thing again, okay? Like, we get it, we, we are nautically themed. <laughs> okay. But, yeah, I don't know. I don't know why she ignores me, I guess she's just bored with me. Well, we had it all set up for her to give me this thing tonight that probably doesn't even work, but, yeah, maybe that wasn't the point. I mean, you think we have a pretty good rivalry going on, on uh, going, right? Or, at least, had. It was pretty fucking bitter and contentious for a while there, and there was some good chemistry. I don't know what happened. Um, I guess... I wouldn't really know. Their text is so very similar. <laughs> I wouldn't really know. Sometimes people just drift away, I think, or just aren't as into the quadrants as the other wants to be. 
So you really think your feelings for her run that dark? It doesn't matter. Like I said, she's bored shitless. I guess I'm not as good a uh, good at Sari as I thought. That is so ridiculous. Any girl will be lucky to have you as a uh, have her kiss me as diabolical as you, especially that one. Who knows what her problem is? She has a she has issues. Eh. Well. Okay. Thanks for saying so. You know, I'm not sure why we never talk about our romantic aspirations. We should more often. It's kind of exciting. Shrug. Probably because you fill your gossip quota with your nubby-horned bro. You leave nothing left to talk about with your dear, sweet Moirail. We're supposed to help each other with that stuff, too, remember? Maybe. Seems kind of... odd, though. Your stupid fishy face is what's odd. Have you ever thought about that? Fine. Well, well those are my stupid feelings. What about, well, what about yours? Seems to me like you get along too well with everybody to be harboring any black sentiments. Um... Yeah, I can't think of anybody I feel that way about. I mean, I'm just not old enough to have those feelings yet. We are still pretty young, you know. Yeah. So, okay, those are your black leanings. What about red, Aridin? Hmm? Oh, God. Is there a lucky lady you're waxing scarlet for? Or a lucky fellow? Uh, tell me! Don't pretend you're all embarrassed suddenly! Okay, Fef, this is none of your damn business. I gotta go. Be back later when it's time to play. Can look at this aquarium, cease trolling cuttlefish color. Oh, sad feff. Aridin, go get a beverage. Another emotionally exhausting conversation. Too many feelings and problems. It couldn't be any clearer to you. You and this sea princess have splashed down hard into the Moiro zone, and now you don't know which way's upward. Perhaps tonight you, are, you will reveal your true feelings toward her, and end these exaggerated emotional theatrics once and for all, one way or another. You need a stiff drink, but... Ugh, not this swill. You're not that desperate. <laughs> Check fridge! I'm gonna say, I'm getting paranoid for some reason. You pay a visit to what the common land dwellers refer to as a thermal hull. Instead of the more aristocratic and especially esoteric and alien sounding term, a refrigerator. <laughs> Open it! <laughs> a bunch of unbelievably shitty wands tumble out. Of course you knew these were in here, you're not even sure why you looked. Go get a feffery, go get a beverage. Another emotionally exhausting conversation. Too many feelings and problems. That guy. Talk about a high-maintenance Moirail. Perhaps tonight you will reveal your true feelings towards him, and end these exaggerated emotional theatrics one way or another. You need a sugary drink. <laughs> Underwater psh, <laughs> the tab. This is stupid. <laughs> Disarm. It's a two by three dent kind, trident kind. You decide to unwind and take your mind off the drama for a while before starting the game. You nearly forgot this is going to be an exciting night. Everything you're about to do is ex uh, next is exciting. It's always exciting. You're excited. You unequip... Sidon's Intente? Boy, howdy. A golden double culling fork, a legendary weapon reserved for royalty, and generally only used for ceremonial purposes. Aridin Disarm. You unequip Ahab's Crosshairs, which is yet another legendary weapon about as powerful as your kind of Stratus will allow. You plundered it from a ghost ship during a particularly challenging campaign. It was the same old, uh, hmm, Gablignance, I have a hard time reading that word every time, ship from which your accomplice at the time also plundered a set of extraordinarily powerful dice. You almost feel sorry for the adver adversaries you will face tonight. They will likely pose neither team much challenge at all, unless one of the links in the prototyping chain includes something especially huge and monstrous. But really, what are the odds of that happening? Bother Vriska. Oh, great, these two have very similar sounding voices. Shit. On the subject of your old accomplice slash rival, you guess you'll try talking to her one more time, even though you know she won't answer. You know she is bored shitless with you and your drama. You are almost starting not to care about this stupid doomsday device, which probably won't even work. She probably knows you know it won't work. She has probably put all the pieces together and knows it was an elaborate ruse to be in cahoots with her again. And she just went along with it, playing you for a chump. You are such an idiot! <laughs> yeah, see? No answer. Bored shitless, just like you thought. She has much hotter irons in the fire than you these days. But it wasn't that long ago that you were the hottest iron. At the height of your prowess as Seagrifts, Marquis Mindfang, and Orphaner Duelscar were in a lot... Uh, we're in alliance and unmatched terror, and in competition, unbridled tempest. Either way, spoils were typically traded and shared. No levels were left for anyone else to gain. None of the levels. She would have the victims of your conquest walk the plank. While you would reap the custodial spoils. Ooh, boy. Ooh, boy. 
and while yet another partook not in revelry, but necessity. Whisper. She had to keep her fed to keep her calm, to keep her terrible voice down. If she were to raise it above a whisper, trolls would begin dying. First, the lesser bloods, those more uh, susceptible. If she raised it to a shout, all on the planet would die, land and sea dwellers alike. And if she ever, if she were ever to get really upset, she might release the vast glub, a psychic shockwave that would exterminate every troll in the galaxy. In truth, it would be all too easy to solve the land dweller problem once and for all. You'd just need to lighten up on the feeding schedule for a while. Maybe you'd get a little too busy to bother with the hassle for once. Or maybe you could happen to be off your game for a spell. It happens, even to the best sometimes. But now I'd make her upset. More emotions, more problems, that's all you need. Sometime later. The Witch of Life takes her place in the land of dew and glass. Fevery, report to Aridin. Cuttlefish Color began trolling Kaliga's Aquarium. Phew! Feff, are you in? Yeah. Well, that took forever. I was getting worried, kinda. Yes, it was a pretty close call and got kind of complicated. But Sogs finally came through, and now I believe the full chain is complete. Man, that guy. He's a fucking drama machine. <clears throat> it's fucking pathetic. Your stupid fishy face is the drama machine <laughs> that uh, does nothing but wine and club. Fuck, sorry. Anyway, you should say that about him. He is a hero, and he saved my life. Yeah, sorry. I was just really worried and stressed out. I thought you were dead. And I and I didn't even get to thank you for saving my life, or really for anything. Or really for anything. And I just spent all this time here worrying and thinking about stuff, and I said I have something I would want to tell you. That I would have been meaning to get off my nub for a while now. Oh, really? Well, that's good. Actually, I have something I've been meaning to say to you, too. Oh, really? Uh, what is it? You go first. Hmm. Okay, but this isn't easy to say. Yeah, I, I know. It's okay, maybe I will understand more than you think. We might even be saying the same thing. Okay, I hope so. I, I think now that we're both in this game and have left our world behind, and you no longer pose the danger to our people that you had always planned to, I think it's not really necessary for me to be your Moirel anymore. Whoa, 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 wait. What? I'm really sorry, Aridin. It, it's just been so hard looking after you and keeping you out of trouble. It's taken its toll, and honestly, I'm really exhausted. Fuck, this isn't what... I don't know. I wasn't expecting this at all. I'm not sure I can handle this. I'm sorry. It will be the best for both of us. We can just sort of be regular friends instead. No, please don't. Look, I'm being serious here. Don't do this. I won't even use my weird accent while I type, okay? So you know I'm being really dead serious and honest about this. Uh, okay... I'm being serious and honest, too. See? Okay, good. Are you sure you aren't being hasty about this? You've just been through a lot. I mean, we are both supposed to be fated to be Moirels, aren't we? Isn't that how it works? You can't just throw all that away because you're sick of me. I'm not sick of you, Aridin. I still really like you. In order to be destined for Moirel allegiance, both people have to be on board, don't you think? But I cannot do it anymore. So I think it just wasn't meant to be all along. And really, you just don't need me anymore. You're free to do as you wish. We both are. I can't look after you anymore. I didn't ever need anyone to look after me. I was totally fucking fine. My ambitions were noble, and really none of your fucking business, quite frankly, your majesty. And the only reason I put up with your st uh, sticking, mm, put up with sticking my flipper in this fucking shithole quadrant with, with you was... Was what? Never mind. Tell me. Okay, fine. I apologize for losing my shit over this. I was just caught off guard is all. But maybe it's a good thing, really. Actually, I might be proposing the same thing, to be honest. Oh? Yeah. Feth, have you ever thought about, since you don't want to be pale with me no more, the possibility of uh, some other type of arrangement with me? What do you mean? I mean something a bit more kind of reddish, like brighter red. No, I hadn't thought about it. Okay, well, what do you think about it, now that you're thinking about it? Um... I don't really know about that. Why not? I thought you said you liked me. I do, but I don't know if it's really in that way. Couldn't it be, though? Unless you think there's room in your collapsing and expanding bladder-based aquatic vascular system for those feelings. I've never had a chance to consider anything like that. I've just spent all my time worrying about you and trying to keep you from killing everybody or hurting yourself. It's like all my energy. I don't think I have anything left for those feelings, either. Oh, God. What? I'm the biggest fucking idiot who ever lived. I can't believe I just opened up to you like a chump when I knew what was coming. 
I'm one sad fucking brine sucker, over emotional sappy treasure, and I'm not better than anybody. I'm worse than anybody. Everybody. All the bodies. Stop. God, will you just clam up for once in your life? Always carping and carping and carping. You go completely overboard with your emotions. Always looking to reel your drama wherever you can. And I'm up to my gills in it. I just can't say I'm in the strength anymore. Uh, an enemy more. I cannot believe you were doing the fish pun thing while you're breaking up with me. Real nice. Whoops, I mean real nice. <laughs> Sorry, but really, this shouldn't be as bad as it sounds. When all is said and done, I'm still your friend. We have left we have left our world behind. Everyone is dead, and there's no use in worrying about it now. It's over. It's time to play this game and focus on building something new and exciting. So hang in there, Aridin. I have to go now. Sog's in serious trouble, and I have to go help him. Bye! Well, wait. Don't go. Cuttlefish Collar. Seas Trolling. Cayuga's Aquarium. Blub. Ugh! Bonk. Oh, okay. Hang on. I have a text from my uh, boss. Okay. Perfect. Huh. <laughs> splash. Splash. Spash. <laughs> Spash. That was chaotic. That was a lot. <laughs> You're free! <laughs> Carcat, check on Solix. It's been a minute since we've seen Carcat. <laughs> Carcinogeneticist began trolling twin Armageddons. Bro, you okay? Hey. Oh, God, what have I done? Solix? Please tell me that's just honey. Please just be honey. Please just be honey. Please just be honey. <laughs> okay, make believe time is over. Oh god, 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 oh god. It is all your fault. You couldn't get him in before the glub. There, there, you blubbering goddamn pansy. Land of tents and mirth. That's the first death. First of many. <laughs> like that Jack is just slapping him shitless. Gamzy, indul indulge emotional theatrics. Cal Caligula's Aquarium began trolling terminally capricious. Gam, I need to talk uh, to Carr. Where is he? He isn't answering. He's busy being slapped motherfucking senseless by the guy who likes knives. But I can relay what message you got, my brother. I don't feel comfortable with that. I don't have some. Uh, I have some serious feelings and problems here, and I need some ad advice. <laughs> yeah, I feel you. He's pretty worked up, too. Well, why? Because our good bro Sogs just kicked the wicked motherfucking shit. Well, what the fuck do you mean by that? Are you saying he's dead? Yeah. Oh, fuck. Oh, God, fuck. Now I feel like an asshole. Yeah, I'd say that an asshole is the thing that just about what everybody feels like. Carcat blames himself on it. Poor motherfucker. But I told him to be chill because there is a miracle coming. I can feel it. That is the worst fucking advice. What would, what would an awful thing to see you, uh, uh, I think, uh. hold on, we start the sentence over. Well, what an awful thing are you to say? Magic isn't real, you, uh, isn't real stupid, stop believing in it. I've got to believe in what my heart tells in me, even if it's a fake thing. Honk. And this is a lot of pointless fucking rubbish and isn't no emotional help to him or me or either for that matter. Put car on. Uh, I can't really think about intervening. The black frowning motherfucker kind of scares me. Are you sure I can't help a brother up in his motherfucking chill? I don't know. It probably doesn't matter. My feelings seem petty and meaningless now. She had better things to worry about than my overwrought bullshit. Like the dead guy who saved her. So forget it. Thanks anyway. Bro, my advice is you just kick back and motherfucking snap into some rude elixir and maybe get your wicked zone on. There. I said my piece. What the fuck are you fucking battling about? Snatch an ice cold, dog. Motherfucking chug that shit like you and the bottle was reunited lovers. Are you recommending a Bellridge to me or something? Is that what this is? Yeah, man, slime a Fago. I don't have a fucking Fago, you stupid fuck. Well, why would I keep that disgusting shit on hand? Are you motherfucking sure about that? Oh. Oh, God, you're right, I do. I totally forgot about it. You see, man? Mother... Fucking miracles. Aridin, slam a fago. 
<laughs> you prepare to kick back and motherfucking snap into some rude elixir and maybe get your wicked zone on. It sure would be startling if that f if what followed was a crudely drawn spit take accompanied by an odd short exclamation. <laughs> Blah! <laughs> what? It's just soda. Not great, but not that bad either. What's the big deal? We all need to settle down here. <laughs> this was at the height of, uh, or close to the height. Where Homestucks were obsessed with Fago. Like, it was, it was, it was, I was not immune. <laughs> I was, I was not immune to this. But it was, yeah, it was, you know, boy, it was bad. And later still. A princess prepares to administer a universal remedy for the unawakened. The corpse mooch. <laughs> Carcat, blah. <laughs> the face bomb times to your combo. <laughs> Hey, kid. Never got a chance to say how much I hate you. Every last one of you. <laughs> the face palm times uh, one combo. Goddamn troll kids. Every time you turn around, they're smooching each other. Makes a man want to stab his own gut and puke blood. <laughs> it is like I am the kid from the never ending story. Never ending story. I was chased by some bullies into this fucking attic, and now I'm watching people, watching people, watching more people kissing and stuff basically forever. How many meta layers removed this story can we get? This attic is spooky. I wish those bullies would just leave me alone. Later, I'm going to ride a long magic dog through the sky and fuck their shit up. Ugh, this troll paint is making a mess. This is such a bad idea. MSPA, quick, become more meta while AH is brooding. There he is! There they are! There's the bad self. <laughs> the shitty keyboard. I love it. <laughs> the land of stumps and dismay. Boy, what is it? It's, this is like a 24-player session, isn't it? AH employs a daring execution of author tech ladder to self-indulgence behind his own back. It keeps happening. All MSPA readers make a solemn vow to do an acrobatic fucking pirouette off the stump and blow their brains out if it doesn't stop, keep happening. <laughs> AH, okay, haha, ha, get back to the story, jackass. Excuse me? Oh, I am sorry, am I not going fast enough for you? Well, quite frankly, your majesty, I don't think you realize what kind of hell I've been through. Do you have any idea how long I've been trapped in this attic? Do you have any idea how fucking scary it is in here? Do you have any, even the slightest clue how many times that wolf head over there has scared the shit out of me? Uh, wolf? <laughs> ah! <laughs> this is ridiculous. No, this is my life we're talking about here. Bullies, wolves, musty addicts, huge spiders. Did I mention the spiders? Let me tell you, I got hella spiders up in this... Fuck, this horn fell off. Damn it, piece of shit. What if there's any glue in here? Oh, screw it. <laughs> Do you have any idea how much power I wield over you? To what extent I can ruin the shit you step in with that squeaky clean Sunday loafer you use to stomp that bookmark and stamp, the, uh, stamp that F key day goddamn in in and day fucking out. Do you possess even the most infinitesimal kernel of cognizance for the degree to which I can make the shorn, shivering weasel that is the totem spear representing your wretched fascination with this website squeal in heart-trending remorse? It would be so easy! I could snap my gray smudgy fingers right now and make you read all the troll ram exposition segments all over again, back to back to back to back to back to back. Oh, you don't think I'll do it? Oh my god. The problem is... Oh, there it is! <laughs> wow. That's what just happened, bitch! <laughs> Booyah, Spike. Alright, now you're definitely trolling us. Come on. <laughs> A-H. Recap, then? Hmm. Now I think we're good. Reel it in. Yeah, okay, guys, I've trolled you guys long enough. Where were we? Oh, yeah, Slick. SS, move this along. It's bad enough you had to wash this broad smooch of corpse and this kid ball his eyes out, but, uh, out once already, even if it was centuries ago. Next. <laughs> oh, for the love of... Why would they even design a button like that if it doesn't print the, uh, the right advancement characters? You're, <laughs> you're getting really tired of mashing the equals key. SS, type... Four more equals, then that. <laughs> Pound. 
This moon is different. It's very purple and quiet. Doesn't look like anyone is awake yet. Not like the yellow moon you were just dreaming about. Plenty of friends there, all up and around, making a racket. It's fun for a while, until you woke up with honey in your mouth, killed your looses, saved a princess, and died. Luckily, you had a couple lives to spare. <sighs> okay. <laughs> right. 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 Most other players only get one extra, but you're kind of a special case. Boy! Huh? You there, red and blue boy, blue, red and blue eye boy. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Hello, I remember this. I did not get the chance to formally greet you. I suspect that, uh, this is what made you angry. But worry not, I have been brushing up in your troll etiquette. Pardon me while I consult the appropriate pages. It will only be a moment. This book is very thick. Just what you need, another voice of the imminently deceased invading your head. Haven't they caused you enough trouble already? Get. It. Out. Troll etiquette sure is confusing. <laughs> get it out, get it out, get it out, get it out. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Solox, blast off. You've wasted enough time on sleeping and dying. You've, you've got to get back to adventuring while the adventuring is good. And also change out of these stupid pajamas. Pachoo! Get back to adventuring. The revived Mage of Doom returns to the land of brains and fire for a surprise rendezvous with the Witch of Life. <laughs> Call prod. Hey, what the heck is going on in here? Friska, get back to adventuring! Somewhere on Lomat, the thief and the page plunder the untold riches of innumerable pointless side quests. <laughs> Tarot's face. Isn't Snowman's her... Uh, snowman her... Exile. The thief is proving useless, completely unresponsive to commands. You'll need to rely on someone else. Someone less stubborn. Someone craftier. Eighth Exile. Type. Switch to. While the Knight of Blood charges ahead, the Seer of Mine remains behind to unravel the mysteries of the land of thought and flow. Seer. Seer. It is time. It's the voice again. You were wondering when she'd come back. This time you were ready for her. Terezi, retrieve chalk. <laughs> scratch sniff. You search for the appropriate card through your scratch sniff modus. This card will be unmistakable. It's one that smells like a fruity rainbow that makes you sneeze. <laughs> Inquire. Time for what? To begin your mission. What mission? You must eliminate the Arc Agent. Nepeta. Ah, oh, Exile Jack Noir. Nepeta, surely you must be adventuring by now. A land of little cubes and tea. That's right, she has like a longer name for her thing. Why, yes, as a matter of fact, it does appear that the Rogue of Heart has been keeping herself quite busy. Aggress. <laughs> Nequius is there. Saccharine disposition. <laughs> Pounce greet. <laughs> Little cubes everywhere. Tackle slide. <laughs> you inquire into whereabouts of the Maid of Time. The Arrow Void has no idea where she went. She just disappeared. Equius, get up and commence the adventure in. The underlings have been getting enormous lately. Must have been something one of the other clowns prototyped. Speaking of clowns... Equius, answer Carcat. It does not appear to be a message from Carcat directed at you specifically. He has just updated one of the many memos on the trans timeline bulletin board he set up a while ago. You've since no longer bothered keeping up with the endless and mostly incomprehensible communique. But while checking the update, you can't help but skim through the first memo in the long sequence, which was written hours ago from your pres present perspective. Read first memo. <sighs> Here we go. Past carcinogeneticist, 600, uh, 600, 612 hours ago, opened public trans timeline bulletin board, Team Adora Bloodthirsty. PCG, 612 six, hours ago, open memo on board, Team Adora Bloodthirsty. Okay, I think I set this up right. Fuck, I should have come up with a better board name. But I guess that's the name it was supposed to have, since that's the name that uh, I already read. 
Well, that's probably won't make any sense to anybody. Whatever. It's just a stupid name. Let's just do this. This is a public bulletin using Trollian's weird trans timeline features, which I don't even really understand yet, but I'm guessing might be useful. I've included all 12 players in the subscription list, so you should all have, be able to read these memos at any time. That is all the memos posted, past and future, I think. It could get pretty temporally confusing, obviously. I'm going to try to keep the memos as simple and linear as possible. Also, let's keep this a one-way-only bulletin board to make this, as, make this as simple as possible. Do not reply to my memos. This is not a fucking chat room, assholes. If you have something to say to me in response to a memo, message me in private at the appropriate point on the timeline. First order of business is about the teams. As of now, you should all be aware that there is really only one team, and we're all working together. And by now, I mean the local to me as of writing this. I mean time local to me as of writing this. So if you're reading this in the past... Uh, okay, first of all, how do you even know about this, this feature already? Second, why didn't you fucking tell me? Whatever, I digress. If you're reading this in the future, then who cares? It's probably old news to you. Actually, now that I think about it, what's so special about reading this in the future? It's like any bulletin board. You post stuff and it sits there for a while and people in the, in the future read it. Huh, big fucking deal, I guess. Past Gal Cal Gal's Calibrator, 551 hours ago, responded to the memo. Oh my god, Carcat, who cares? PCG banned PGC from responding to the memo. Anyway, like I was saying. One big team, uh, over which I have assumed total leadership. I will assume it, that it will continue to stay this way for the, for the duration of our quest, and that it will remain an impeccable leader for a span of hundreds of hours while I guide us all to stunning victory. In fact, I don't even need to assume. I browse through the, this whole bulletin in advance, and it does appear to be the case. Go me. In fact, since I've seen what I will write in the future, I wonder what impetus I will have for writing it later when I'm supposed to. I wonder if I just copy-paste it. Hold on. Damn, I guess I thought of that. I don't know. I tried to look at the whole bulletin again, but now that I've opened this one from the beginning, I can't see the whole thing anymore. Unless I look at it one of your on one of your computers. Or maybe if you send me, like, a text file of it. Will that cause a paradox or something? You know what? This is so stupid. I actually remember reading all this shit like a half hour ago, and now I here I am typing it anyway. I probably can't avoid typing any of this. How weird is that? I hate time travel. Past Twin Armageddon's, uh, 34 hours ago, 34 minutes ago, responded to Memo. <laughs> KK, I'm basically just LMAO here at this. Wow. Holy fucking shit. Are you people stupid? Dude, don't worry. I won't fuck up your memo for long. I just can't believe that's what the big reason you wanted future me to help you uh, open those ports. To basically just babble about paradox and then argue with yourself for hundreds of pages. <laughs> okay, so you're saying this is from like five hours in the future just to give me a hard time. Nice. Well, thanks for the help. So when, I, when do I ban you, future boy? A few lines now after I pretend like I'm going to die. I'm sure for a laugh on account of my imminent banning. Fuck, how could I even do that to me? So cold, man. Or how could you even do that to me? So, so cold, man. Are you really still sore at me five hours later for running that virus? God damn, get over it. It was your fucking virus anyway. You, you're to blame. <laughs> no, bro, we're cool about that. Now, future you with connecting with me so I can enter the game. Oh, yeah? Yeah, so thanks for the five hours in advance. This is BS, isn't it? Trolling me from the future. How juvenile can you get? No, man, it's through. We are bald bumping pupa pal again. Oh, fuck. This is condescending future know-it-all act. We are bumping shit. You are so banned. No, not the ban. It burns. Oh, God. <laughs> Wait. Oh, God, it does burn. Something's wrong. I'm serious. That horrible psychic noise and voices. They're all going to die. Oh, shit. I'm bleeding. Shit. This is bad. I have, to, uh, I have to get a ring quick. Gotta go. PCG banned PTA from responding to memo. And so the poor sign uh, hoof belonging to the swollen hag known as Lady Destiny has stomped another throat. Which one of you fuckers is next? Nobody? Okay, good. Although I'm fairly sure I remember someone else chiming in before I close this memo. You add, uh, you ADD disordered shit rinsers can't keep your lascivious prongs out of the row hole, can you? Solix, for future reference or past reference or whatever, if you want to do that kind of role playing, you can start your own bulletin. Or can all, uh, or can all act like brain dead ass wipes in your own festering flap of paradox space. Fine with me. Everyone will be so confused by the time paradoxes, it will distract them from how awful their terrible uh, hobbies are. Choose your classes now. Le uh, level 69 nook sniffer is up for grabs. Who wants it? No, that's not an invitation for you fucking nerds to come in here and correct me on your goddamn fairy elves. Just do me a favor and keep me banned from that one, okay? I'll return the favor if you need if you nerd on my memos. I seriously can't believe how many fucking nerds are on this are on this team. Just remember this is my personal podium, a stump, if you will, for sole use by me as leader for important leadership business. Got it? Future Carcinogenesis, six, six, six or twelve hours from now, responded to memo. Crone, this is so embarrassing. What was I even thinking? Shut the fuck up. PCG banned SCG from responding to memo. Okay, I'm fed up with this memo. Gonna close it out. You'll hear from me again later when I got something else to say. I.e., just scroll down, you douche. It's alright. 
It's all right there already because of time travel. I know, right? Anyway, just to reiterate, full steam ahead. Leader equals me forever. Obviously, peace the fuck out, D-Bags. Current centaur's testicle, res uh, uh, right now, responded to memo. I'd like, <clears throat> I need some drink for this, actually. Some drink water, asshole. I'd like to add to this useless memorandum that I still don't recognize the validity of your leadership. Sweet mother grubs oozing vestigial third oral sphincter. How can you people be so stupid? It may be true that we are all playing in the same session, but I see no reason to disband the former power structures. Especially if it means in instituting a tactical midget with a short fuse, a foul mouth, and paralyzing insecurity over the color of his blood. That's all I have to say. Oh, I have a short fuse! That's very funny! You can almost hear me laugh over the sound of the robot you are probably beating to death, or doing worse to. Hey, do you, you do kiss your robots, right? Uh, might as well clear the air as long as we're broadcasting. Broadcasting this across the entire space-time continuum. N not usually. <laughs> <laughs> the funny thing is, in the future, everyone will re recognize me as the undisputed leader, even you. You'll be standing on the tippy toes of your idiotic metal shoes, de uh, taking delicate perches on my nubby horns, and hoisting yourself over my head to put your sweatiest tough guy smooch upon my twitching spine lump. It will be tender and deferential, like a pauper kissing a noble's ring. Just scroll down, read the logs. Nowhere have I seen evidence of this. Most of this is you from various points in time raving about nonsense and arguing with yourself. Do you uh, realize that here in the future, this bulletin has come to be regarded as something of a joke, a lengthy piece of comedy often quoted amongst ourselves in private moments of levity? It seems I'm the one to inform you of this up front, which is likely why you persist with ingratiating charade against better judgment. You're getting off this, aren't you? You're getting off on this, aren't you? What do you mean? This excites you, being the tough guy and pretending like you're putting the awesome leader in his place. You're probably working up a good sweat. Hope he alchemizes a bunch of spare towels. Here, why don't you take... <clears throat> and hand from them with your spongy brain for extra absorbency. How do you know about my perspiration problem? I mean, aside from reading about it in this memo. Wait, fudgesicles. PCG banned CCT from responding to memo. PCG, closed memo. The memos just get fucking stupid from here on. Okay. <laughs> wow, oh my god, Dark Text Lady. I get it. No, I don't think... Uh, I don't think so. Where are you then? Okay, sorry I asked. What? No. <laughs> it's okay, because... I don't want to uh, run out of red. Because red is the best and tastes the best. <laughs> Less than three. Uh, come on, what does it say? What do you got there? You are a strange and funny girl. Carcat began another memo. Current carcinogenesis right now. Open memo on board Team Adora Bloodthirsty. This is as good a time as any to start a new memo. In fact, it's a better time than, and, than any because according to the laws of chat client predestination, I don't really have a choice, do I? Fuck. It doesn't matter. It's still a good time to do it. People, we need to get organized here. Shit is getting serious. We're about to embark on Operation Register, a cunning plan devised by Double Arc Agent Jack Noir to exile the Black Queen. We will need all hands on deck for this, even the idiots. And once again, a reminder, do not troll me in these memos from any point in time, or it's an insta-ban. Also, a note to my future self, if you feel the need to say something smug, do me a favor and shove a throb stock in it. In it. Just sit there patiently and wait for me to become you in the due course of time, thus improving our intellect drastically. Or, intellects, plural. I forgot, there are a lot of you fuckers out there. All of you, just zip your shoots. I mean, seriously, like, there's nothing better to do in the future? It's the future for God's sake, a realm of endless fucking possibilities. Now, before we get started, let's take a toll of the situation at this point in time. My point in time. Who's in so far, who's not, etc. Future Caligula's Aquarium, 311 hours from now, responded to Memo. Hey, sorry for busting in on the memo, but I can't get a hold of you. Uh, you're not answering. Oh, for fuck's sake. Gam's advice is fucking useless. All he told me was to enjoy a bell ridge. No, dude, don't drink that shit. If it were up to him, we would all drink Fago once in some ritualistic rap clown suicide pack. But instead of committing suicide, the thing that all we all accomplish is becoming instant instantaneous assholes with awful taste. I mean, it's not even that bad. It's just soda, but whatever. This isn't the point. This isn't the venue for airing your future problems, Count C. Dipshit. I know, I know. It's just, I got a problem with Feffrey. And I'm really kind of sitting here in bad shape about it. Emotionally speaking. Okay, well, I get that. I hear you, bro. But this is still not the right place for this. I've got to... So I've got to ban you. CCG banned FCA from responding to Memo. But seriously, just get in touch with me in private about it, okay, man? We'll get your shit straightened out. 
Okay, is everybody good? <clears throat> Just gonna sit here for a minute, local time, and see if anyone else has any shit they want to scrape off their bulge uh, on to my clean nutrition uh, plateau. Nobody? Great, wonderful. I am now officially... I now officially declare the nonsense portion of this memo to be over. This decree shall be bl binding and lasting. Back to planning, register. Bear down, everybody. This is fucking important. There's a queen on the loose, and we've got to show a bitch... <laughs> we've got to show a bitch the door. Future Arachnid's grip, 609 hours from now, responded to memo. Unfucking believable Car cat. I'm sorry, but do you have any idea how funny this thing is? I mean, this whole thing. I can't stop laughing. Hey, can future you mind prevent me from hitting the ban button? I'm genuinely curious. Go ahead, try to stop me, I dare you. I'm not going to try. I'm just here to say this whole thing is ridiculous. We didn't really need you to, uh, need you to pretend to be a, a little angry general to get any of this done. We kicked the queen out of there, no sweat. It was easy. In fact, I did most of the work myself, right before I found all the treasure and scaled all the rungs. Oh, all of them, you say? Fascinating. Hey, forget the ban button. Use your mind powers to help me locate the desperately attempt to give a shit button. Whoops, we both failed. It doesn't exist. Hey, I'm gone. I just think you should relax. You were wound up so tight through the whole adventure, and now here in the present, you're about to explode. It's insufferable. Everybody, did you hear that? Super Future Vriska has an important life lesson for us all. We don't have to worry about our present responsibilities and obligations, because as it turns out, in the future, all that stuff already happened. We're off the fucking hook. Time to relax. Let's all crawl into our cocoons and get busy stimulating our otter Arachnid shame globes. First one to start a wank fire gets a shiny boon dollar. This is an order from your leader. <laughs> CCG banned FAG from responding to memo. Later, FAG. Because I will not say that. Too bad the acronym wasn't HAG instead. It would have suited you much better. Instead of that nonsense word. Maybe it's associated with, with, uh, with you with you will colloquially cause it to take on a negative connotation. What do I, what do you think? Maybe FAG will be the new burn, even though it really means nothing in our language. I don't know, this is stupid, forget it. Okay, I'm rambling here, I'm aware of that. Future me, don't you fucking dare weigh in on this. I know what you're thinking. If I were future me, which I guess I am, I would read this and be all over it. Like, damn it, Carcat, why do you, or what do you think you're doing? Get to the point. Future carcinogeneticist, 20 hours from now, responded to the memo. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> CCG banned FCG from, the, from responding to memo. So, I'm saying it to myself already here and now, so I won't have to later. Get- got it, you trenchant backbiting pricks. Damn, I'm losing my train of thought. Maybe I'll pick it up again in a fresh memo. Uh, later. I don't know if that's right, though, because I vaguely remember this one being longer than this. Pass audio to Rhea Door. .38 hours ago, responded to the memo. Hey, oh son of a bitch. I thought, since it looks like you're saying you're out of importance memo stuff to say, uh, maybe you could help me here? Since I don't know where you are now, but maybe help me. About a thing that has to do with a girl? Like, a romance thing you might know about? You people are imbeciles. All of you. I am not posting these memos to <laughs> counsel you on your past and future dating problems. Why are you such basket cases? I don't even know what to say anymore. Sorry. Should I ban you? What's even the point anymore? One of you students will be right on, <laughs> right on the last one's heels with another sob story. Just hurry up and tell me your problem. what your problem is, bro. Okay. I'm sort of... Lying on Friska's floor right now, like, in her block, lying down, uh, you know, because I can't walk. Oh, no shit, really? You can't be serious. When did that happen? Uh, yeah, anyway, she tried to kiss me. Well, she didn't try, she actually did. And then, kinda dropped me. And also, we are wearing costumes. Well, I'm not explaining this well. This is so fucked up, what have you gotten yourself into? And now, to make it, uh, a lot weirder, there is an angry voice in my head. I don't think it's Rufio this time. Rufio's not that angry. He's also imaginary. Like, a fake made-up friend. You know, like, the way fairies are. God, I actually remember reading this bullshit. Or skimming it, at least. How could I forget? More loony block theater, and here I am drawing the curtains for you guys like a dope. Anyway, I think Friska's upset about it, and she's not talking or anything. What do I do? Okay, well, I can advise you and stuff, but you do realize this is a public bulletin. We should be having this chat in private. Everyone can read this, even her. I mean, fuck, she was just here talking to you, dummy. I know, I read that, but that's future her, which doesn't seem so bad. Maybe future her could read this, and I guess, no, I'm sorry about it. I didn't mean to hurt her feelings. Well, fine, if you want to broadcast a trans timeline apology, then fine. But you should realize the future is kind of a wide-open thing. I mean, she could read this, like, two minutes in the future as well as 600 hours. At that point, it would essentially be talking to present her, completely defeating the purpose of your spineless message in a bottle of apology. Oh, yeah. I didn't really think of that. 
Past Arachnid's grip from eight minutes, basically, hours ago, responded to Memo. Hi. <laughs> Car can't shut up. This does not concern you. Okay, whatever. My memo, but whatever. Uh, wow. Hi. Tavros, it's okay, really. So you don't feel that way about me. It's fine. I shouldn't have expected any different. I can deal with it. I'm not a wimp like you. I roll with, ba with bad breaks all the time. No biggie. In fact, I already have dealt with it. It was over here. I was over here dealing with it while you were over there on the floor fooling around with your computer after a cute girl tried to kiss you for some reason. As it turned out, fooling around with your computer to go cry on future Carcat's shoulder about this? Um, yeah. <laughs> you are a strange and funny boy, Tavros. Oh god, this is completely hilarious. Now I see why everyone has been ripping on my memos. Carcat, I said shut the fuck up! Anyway, though totally unnecessary, your apology is accepted. Okay. Now pick yourself up off the floor so we can go wring some fucking treasure out of this miserable magic rock. Yeah, I'll try. Actually, never mind. I'll be over here, to, over there to help you with that too. Kind of like I do with everything. Just lie still and try not to start crying or anything. And wait a few minutes for your time for me to catch up with mine. Uh... What? Exactly. I am smarter than you. You see? You're learning. Fuck, enough already. There, great, another happy couple. And whatever hideous quadrant this batshit pairing will sustain. Now off you go! CCG, CCG banned PAT from responding to Memo. CCG banned PAG from responding to Memo. Holy hell, this is exhausting. I don't even know what I was talking about anymore. Okay, maybe I'll, I'll take a minute to collect my thoughts and get back on future on topic here. Future carcinogenesis, 609 hours from now responding to Memo. No, you won't. This one was particularly nauseating in retrospect, so I'm shutting this down. FCG banned CCG for responding to memo. FCG closed memo. Hey, Runt. Oh. Oh, that's right. Hey, Runt. Get up, Runt. Get up on those goddamn jelly legs of yours. Go kiss the girl. I said get your ass up and go kiss the girl, you pipsqueak. You're making me mad, Runt. Kiss that girl. I'll rip your horns off and put them through your, her eyes. I'll pop your little head like a grape. Or your eyes. You're a wimp, you know that? Make me sick. Kiss her. Kiss her, you wimp. Get up and kiss the girl. You were having trouble bringing yourself to get up and kiss the girl. You kiss that girl this instant. <laughs> you cannot do it. You cannot kiss the girl. Thief. You will need to be strong. Is it the same thing? There is important work for you to do. And in time, though prone to distraction and obstinacy, she would, but not alone. Oh. All these voices starting to catch up with me. A good thing he wasn't the voice in Dave's head. That's fair. Hey, guy, how you doing? To bring every circle closed, her partner and rival would have to be guided in tandem. <clears throat> the thief and the seer were to serve as twin lashes of the, of the scourge cracked by a quasi-royal against her own former kingdom to settle a score, to make him pay. Scourge's black inches would rip her red miles through durse, and the bright rivers gushing from its wounds would wash her mutineers down the drains of exile. In time, they would have to answer for their treason. Patience would be necessary, but then she'd reason to come into all the time in the universe. Snowman, continue briefing. Okay, then what? Find the ring before he does. Retrieve the ring from the royal vault. Where is it? And then... Destroy it. Okay. Again, getting to things that I don't remember. <laughs> Boy, this, that thing's scary. Centuries ago. Land of rays and... something. And yet, right now, the Sylph of Space was able to vacate the impact site with several features of her buried landscape in tow. She sits atop her session's dormant forge. Kanaya replied a memo. Future car carcinogeneticist, 599 hours from now, open memo on board team Adora, Bl Adora Bloodthirsty. Fine, then. Since past me just banned Kurt me from the uh, preceding memo and doesn't appear to give a shit about my future wisdom, as usual, looks like I'll just have to start another memo from scratch. Hey, pass me. Go have a blast killing the king. I'm sure it will be awesome. In fact, it was awesome. Bang up job with that, dude. Oh, what's that, passhole? You didn't read this and figure that out ahead of time? Or too bad it was all a huge waste of time. 
oh, was that pass? Oh, you didn't read this video last time? Or maybe you just skimmed this and didn't get right. and it didn't get through your thick bulge. What a shock. Memo within memo to present self. Put forth a more concerted effort to impress upon everyone in the past, myself included, what a bunch of fucking idiots they all are. I am learning a valuable lesson today. It turns out you can't alter the outcome of decisions made by morons, no matter how much you yell at them. All you can really do is give them a hard time and try to make their lives just a little bit more miserable. Which sounds like a more noble pursuit than changing destiny for the better anyway, frankly. Losers should be forced to face the music, even for mistakes they haven't made yet. Their punishment is being allowed to make the mistake in the first place. Talk about poetic justice. And then getting... Uh, soundly berated before, during, and after the mistakes are being made is just the mucus on the grub loaf. The sweet, tangy mucus. This is dumb. Why do I even ever think these moments are going to be a good idea? Nobody cares. I mean, nobody's even trolling me anymore. And I'm leaving myself wide open to saying some pretty dumb things here. I guess maybe I wrote too many and filled too many of them with long arguments with myself. No one's going to read through all this. All the valuable information is getting lost in the yelling. You stupid, stupid idiot. Oh, fuck you. Why do you even start another memo then? I guess... There are a couple things I want to get off my chest, okay? Oh, God, now I'm arguing with current me. I didn't even notice I was doing it. This is really fucked up. I've got to pull it together. Think back to what we might have done wrong. But the thing is, as much as our past selves are a bunch of stubborn, unlistening assholes, I can't even really identify any mistakes we made. It was all pretty much like clockwork. A 600-hour campaign to complete a game like this is pretty good if you ask me. And I have asked me. It turns out me agrees. I can't shake the feeling someone else might be responsible for this. It doesn't seem like it was something that was supposed to happen in our session. Slogs has the same intuition about it as me. He thinks there's something fishy about it. It's really insufferable the way her fish puns have rubbed off on him. It kind of makes me want to vomit. Anyway, he says he's working on tracing the origin of this disaster. If I find out who's responsible, I will. I don't even... I will... I don't want to think about it now. Waste of good fresh... Of, a, of good fresh rage. I'm a little tired of all the old things I've been angry about. It's gotten so stale. In a weird way, I'm sort of looking forward to having something new to be pissed off about. It's like there's anything else to live for now, anyway. So I'm keeping my prongs crossed. It'll be the, like... It'll, uh, it'll be like fucking 12th Paragree's Eve up in here. Last Sweep's Eve was probably the last happy memory I have, in fact. What'd you guys do for last holiday? Anyone? I remember my losers had been gone for days, and it was starting to get worried. But then he finally returned, triumphant. He brought the fresh behemoth leaving it... Mm, he brought the fresh behemoth leaving into our hive. Together we decorated it. And... I don't know. That's all I can say. I'm getting a lump in my squawk blister. I guess I'm done. I'm going to lie down now, on the steel floor of this frigid meteor drifting through this black, uncaring void of our null session. Null. Kind of like memo, I guess. Later. Current Grimnoxiliatrix, right now, responded to memo. CGA, I don't think we did anything special. Whoa, hey. What? Last 12th. And we stayed in, and I read stories to her. It was nice. Oh, that's cool. This is the first time you responded to the memo that I, can't, that I can recall. You took it right down to the wire. I was just about to close this thing. Yeah, I know. I wasn't sure if I was going to, but then I noticed a conversation in which I was a participant, which, as it turns out, is this is a conversation taking place now. I scanned it briefly and then perused over me other memos for my presence. I found none and returned to this one, but part of my conversation was gone. I regarded this as a prompt to begin typing and record my contributions live. This is how it works, isn't it? Pretty much. For a while, it was frustrating. When I discovered the feature, I kind of breezed through all my future memos, not really reading all of them carefully or thoroughly. Then I looked at it again, and the whole board was gone, because it was time to make it in the first place, so I did. And then I kept making memos with only foggy recollections of what they contained, while all these other chumps from different timelines kept giving me shit, including myself. But it was all good, because I was, I, uh, as I eventually became my own future self, selves, and got to be on the other side of those conversations, and could do my past selves the service of informing them how stupid they were being. I stopped bothering trying to remember how any of these w memos went. Honestly, the last few weeks have been a blur to me. Just non-stop yelling at myself, hacking with past and future knuckleheads, killing monsters and solving puzzles, cycling through all the gates and planets like a hundred times, zig zigzagging down to the battlefield, out to the Vale, over, the, over to Prospect, back to Durst, and on and on and on and on like that until we thought we, we won. But we didn't win. We lost. We lost as hard as fat guys fall. What exactly happened? Did you read the memo just before this? No. Give it a read. I'm done ranting about all that for now. All right, in a moment. But yeah, that's how Trollian's timeline stuff works. You'll get used to it. Or not, since apparently this is your only memo reply. You were pretty shrewd in sidestepping this whole clusterfuck. It seems like a logical way to engineer a system wherein only uh, one simultaneously functions as the reader and, the, and author of the transcripts. It's temporally sound construction. Then you're the only one who thinks so. Hell, you probably would have been a better maid of time than the one we were stuck with. She's completely shit-hive maggots. Not, don't even get me started. 
I think we are given roles to challenge us that don't necessarily suit our strengths. At least I was. I have no idea what I'm doing here. Sure you do. Or you will. Trust me, you'll do fine. So what prompted you to, to respond anyway? I mean, aside from being strong armed to conversational predestination. Oh, at this point, I'm not even sure if I'm inclined to ask anymore. You might not have a choice. Do you remember if this moment was much longer than this? Um, there was a good way to go, I think, yeah. Then might as well spit it out. It's such a silly question. Red or black? What? Your problem. Does it pertain to red rum or black rum interests? That's not what this is about. Come on, people have been using this memo to sit through their the romantic problems for weeks. I'm a fucking veteran of this shit by now. Seriously, I don't mind. It'll be a welcome reprieve from shouting at myself. I'm not sure what to say about it. Didn't you, uh, didn't you at least get a sense of what this conversation was about when you skimmed it? <clears throat> uh, not really. If uh, I were thinking about it, I probably wouldn't have wanted to anyway. Don't you think it's better to have unrehearsed conversations, even if the subject matter is awkward? Yes, I completely agree. It's good you didn't read it. We can avoid the sort of verbal slapstick routines I'm sick to fucking death of by now. I am so tired of people being all coy and telling me what we're about to say before we say it, and then we wind up fucking saying it anyway. And then we prove to the invisible Riddler that his, that his father time, beyond a shadow of a doubt, what a bunch of fucking idiots we all are. Do you have any idea how old that shit gets after a while? So, really, tell me. I know it's on your mind. I got a sense for these things. R B. Okay. I read then. But I guess, not really read enough. <laughs> well, isn't that always the case? Story as old as time. Even in places where, strictly speaking, time didn't exist until recently. Who's the target of these flesh leadings, if you don't mind me asking? It's not the asking I mind, it's the telling. In a public forum. I don't think anyone's reading. Did you know anyone else join, join in later? No, it appeared to just be the two of us. See, nobody cares enough to bother. I don't know whether that's reassuring or just a bit disheartening. Well, I didn't mean it like that. Their disinterest is more a reflection on me than you. Disinterest is the op operative concept here. She's not even responding to my messages anymore. Could be busy, but I'm rapidly approaching a resolution to discard the preposterous infatuation. She? Well, I guess it narrows it down somewhat. Shit. If I think back on events knowing, I don't, uh, knowing this, I could probably piece it together. How about... If I agree to consult with you about it in private, we can drop it here, before you crack me like a vault with your weird romance looting acumen. Alright, deal. It still puzzles me that you are so versed on the topic. Do you have access to a manual archived on a remote server somewhere? What? Of course not. I don't actually know all that much. I just know this stuff uh, will drive you shithive maggots if you don't figure out how to deal with it. That figure of speech you keep using puzzles me too. Like, not that I expect you to give a shit, but personally, I am all twisted about black rum, black rum stuff especially. Honestly, I don't think it was, I was cut out to have a kismesis. I think my standards are way too high. Did you know that? Did you know that? This feels so insane to admit, but over the course of this adventure, at times I actually began to suspect I was my own kismesis. How fucked up is that? I'm not qualified to say. Neither romance nor psychology are my strong suits. But obviously it's not true. I never even did any legit time traveling where I could meet myself. I just bickered with past and future ghosts on a chat client. Fitting, really. Every collision... A caliginous adversary I've con contemplated has eluded me like a phantom, even myself. Whatever, I'm done with it. And what sort of scarred ambitions fare any better in that quadrant? No, 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 I'm not airing that shit out here. Maybe privately, it's private. Let's change the subject. What were you originally going to ask me? Oh, fine. Here's the silly question for you. I was just wondering, given your advantage of hindsight, if you had, if you'd had cause to observe at any point in time... Magic. Uh, like real magic. I guess what I'm asking is, is magic a real thing? Wow, you're right. That is, that's kind of the dumbest fucking question I've ever heard. I know. It's just that I have a good reason to believe magic is real. Our ancient predecessors, predecessors discovered how to use it, but then they may have surpassed us in skill by a great deal. I need to drink some water. Carcat's killing me. <clears throat> you put too much stock... Uh, in that ratty old guide. But anyway, no, we never use magic. I mean, let me try to put into perspective how ridiculous this whole notion is anyway. We can alchemize practically anything with the right materials and grist. We can, and did, make super powerful weapons and items that can do practically anything. What additional advantage could magic offer? All this shit is practically magic anyway. But more like goofy sciencey magic, you know? Sure. But everything here is kind of magic in a way, isn't it? Fortune-telling dream clouds and golden moons and shit. If you look around, there's magic everywhere in this bitch. It's all around us. Motherfucking miracles, right? <laughs> what do you need magic for, anyway? I'm running out of ideas. I need to figure out a way to stoke this volcano, in case you and the others are successful in recovering the Queen's Ring. You'll figure it out. 
And you won't need magic, trust me. Just be patient. The answer will come to you somehow. I guess you would know. Yeah, really, there's nothing to, nothing to uh, worry about. At least as far as the details of the adventure go. We were all pretty awesome at this game. Really awesome, in fact. Until a little while ago, when it turned out we weren't actually all that awesome. Turns out we were pretty fucking unawesome all along. Still baffled by what could, uh, what would conceivably cause such a crisis in, in awesomeness post-victory. Well, for starters, have you scrolled over the top of the timelines yet? No. Check that out. Maybe read a few recent memos. Other than that, it's not for you to concern yourself with. Just deal with getting through the quest. I'll catch up with you about it when you catch up with me on the timeline, which just happens to be right now. Say hi to me f for myself. Okay, I probably won't do that, but all right. <laughs> what the hell are you doing over here, over there anyway? You mean future me? Yeah, you're messing around with your chainsaw while Taro's is sleeping on the floor. Oh god, fuck! What are you doing? What? What did I do? Future Carcinogenesis 2, 600 hours from now, responded to Memo. Okay, everything's fine, I guess. What happened? I passed out for about an hour. Fucking embarrassing. You are out of your goddamn mind, you know. Shit hive maggots, you mean? Yeah, in a good way, though. Okay, I'm shutting this memo down for my past self. Since he's currently lying unconscious on the floor an, an, an hour ago. See you in the future now. Till then. FCG2 banned CGA from responding to the memo. FCG2 banned FCG from responding to the memo. FCG2 closed memo. Can I uh, scroll up? Oh, that's right. <laughs> Terezi, fly up. Look at it go. <laughs> Pshwoop. Pshwoop. Sniff, 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 sniff. Sniff, sniff. Hey, Terezi. Hey, hi, Terezi. Hi. Sniff, 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 Just a sniff party up in here. Oh, no. Why is a car cat in Terezi? Oh, no. I need more water. Uh, how long is it? Oh, okay, it's not that bad, actually. <clears throat> Carcinogenesis began trolling Gallo's Calibrator. Okay, I got your message. Thanks for not hassling me about it in one of the memos to get my attention. I appreciate that. Unless you did, but it was in a future memo I haven't written yet, in which case, have a big time fuck you about that in advance. No, I didn't bu bug you about it in your stupid memos. They are annoying, and I'm tired of getting banned for no reason. Posing, the, <clears throat> posing in that at all is the reason. You're not supposed to, you're not supposed to reply to memos, period. That's the reason. Maybe I will start my own bulletin board, and everyone will <clears throat> be allowed to reply anytime they want, except for guys with nubby horns. Oh no, they will be able to reply, they will not be able to reply at all. Grumpy car cats will be expressly forbidden from Rainbow Rumpus Party Town. Sounds lame. By the way, that, that will be the name of the board in case it wasn't clear. Yeah, I got that. This is an empty threat, because if you made a board at any point on the timeline, I would be able to see it right here and read the whole thing already. Wait. Oh, God, you actually did. Yes, future Terezi looking pretty cool right about now. Look, I don't care about the Fruity Rumpus Asshole Factory. That's all this, uh, that, what's all this about going after the Queen's Ring? Well, the thing that, that is all about it is we have to go after the Queen's Ring. It is a new mission. But we're still in the middle of trying to pull off register with Jack. Why don't we take it one mission at a time? Yeah, about that. The whole point is to destroy the ring so Jack doesn't get it. Why would he do that? Jack's an ally. Also, the mission sort of involves exiling Jack, too. This is bullshit. We're not going to exile Jack. He's cool. Carcat, he's not that cool. Yes, he is. He's a total badass with a fuck ton of blades and shit, and he's helping us out. <clears throat> okay, I think it's pretty cute that you sort of look up to him like that, but seriously, I do not get a good feeling from him. He kind of... Stinks? Let me act... Let me acted shocked like I didn't see that coming. Oh, fuck, I forgot my horns. I always forget them. <laughs> no, well, sort of. He doesn't smell bad, actually. He smells really clean and shiny and dark, 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 like an oil slick. And there's a tiny hint of licorice there, too. It's more like the way he moves. I smell his smooth motions and the way he squints his eyes. And it gives me this really nervous feeling. What a surprise. You are dragging, uh, you are dragging your schizophrenic nose into this. What an outstanding character witness. Objection, your tyranny. ha, <laughs> ha. The bottom line is I am not going to exile Jack because you believe you can smell malice off an interpretive dance. Carcat, he's a jerk. He has stabbed you on more than one occasion. Some of those stabbings were accidental. Okay, well, I know for a fact the third time was accidental. Anyway, you've beaten the shit on me a few times yourself. But I didn't draw blood. I mean, I could have to satisfy my curiosity. And I didn't have a... But I didn't as a courtesy to you. Since you still want to keep it a secret from me like a pestilent little wiggler. Hey, I promise I'd tell you. I just wasn't ready, okay? Well, it's okay. I know what color your blood is anyway. No, you don't. Yep, I totally do. 
Lies, I've been very careful. Not like it, all you classless shitbags who slop your blood all over the place every goddamn minute like it's some weird fetish. Uh, hmm. What? Lord, hold on. What is it? I said hold on! Sometimes it's hard to pick out, uh, sometimes it's hard to pick out the letters from the hollow projection. I need to get a closer look. Are you looking at your glasses again? I hate it when you do it. It's fucking disgusting. Nope. What? I'm gonna do that? I do. <laughs> get a closer look. A <laughs> slurp. How long is this one? Okay, that's not bad. I'll read this one. I'm probably out of here. <clears throat> that is much better. It's much easier to read your color this way. Your drab, dirty pavement gray on top of bright candy red like a shiny lollipop. Does that sound familiar, car cat? Yes, I'm extremely familiar with this sort of nonsense by now, sure. No, I mean gray on red, like the way your skin conceals your blood. What? Candy, candy red like your planet. You have strong terry cough syrup in your veins. It is completely delicious. Who told you? Did Jack tell you? No, he doesn't talk much. I figured it out myself. How? I got a closer look, remember? No. Pfft, are you playing... Uh, you were playing so dumb. You know exactly what I'm talking about. I cleaned up my wound and changed my shirt before I even met you. I've been extremely careful. So you're going to have to fill me in. It's when you got close enough to smell it under your skin. Please, Carcat, you do not pretend that you forgot about our little moment. Well, you mean during... Fuck. Okay, shh, shh, shh. Let's not talk about this. We're not here. This isn't a memo. This is... It's a private correspondence just between us, remember? I know, but... Damn it, writing all these memos has made me paranoid. It doesn't feel secure chatting about it over the client. I don't know. We can talk about it in person. How in person do you mean? Uh-oh. Look at my eyebrows getting carried away here. Car can't help. They're out of control. Those are eyebrows? I thought those were horns. They're horns, too. They're whatever I want them to be. Don't change the subject by being cute. Well, apparently I just can't fucking help myself, can I? Nope. How can you even smell so damn well anyway? You give me a hard time about... Uh, being coy about shit, but when it comes to your crazy senses, you're so vague. It's like trying to decipher the daily horoscope riddle, or the riddles for all 48 signs combined. Ah, you are a relentless subject changer. Fine. It's okay if you don't want to talk about it. God, you are so shy for an angry guy who wants to be a big shot leader. It's ridiculous. Look, we'll talk, I promise. Why don't you just say some stuff about yourself for a change and cut me some slack? Okay. Alright, we're gonna... Cut it there. Uh. What we get then? We started like 23, about 200 pages in. That's not bad. So, thanks so much for hanging out, everybody. For me arguing with myself, because this was basically two hours of me arguing with myself through through characters. But I guess I hope you enjoyed this, and thanks for so much for hanging out. And if you're watching on YouTube and made it this far, because these videos are fucking long and I understand that. But if you're on YouTube, and if you liked it, make sure you click the like button. It lets me know that you guys still are still enjoying this. And if you did like it, be sure to subscribe. New videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Monday and Wednesday are uh, my VODs, which I stream. The schedule is in the description on my Twitch channel. Link in the description. And uh, new videos go up on Fridays. Regular videos for YouTube. Comment, let me know what you think about this. What was your favorite part about... Uh, all this nonsense because boy, that argument between Aaron and Feffrey got deep and heavy fast. I forgot about that one. I forgot about a lot of things. This is me remembering. Um, but let me know what you guys think about this. What was your favorite part about today's stream or about the, today's video? Share it with your friends. If they don't want to read Homestuck, they can put this on in the background and they can become Homestucks. I saw some things about with, um, with Sonic Fox, of all things, tweeting out about how Homestuck uh, was rad. And I was like, that's awesome. But more people are like, I just don't want to get into it. It's too much. If you know friends like that who are like, I wanted to get into it, but it's too long to read. Why don't you nudge them over here? And they can start watching the VODs and they get into Homestuck, you know, just saying, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. It builds a community. It's what we're doing here. And ring the bell. Let you know when the videos go live. You're pretty consistent, but let you know at least. Anyway, I'm done rambling. Thanks so much for watching. Later, guy. Have a good one. Anyone else in the chat, have a good one. You on YouTube, have a good one. Everyone have a good one. Hope to see you next time. Later, everybody.